Uh, hold on. Let's go into properties. You and you. Okay, of course it's off. There we go. Okay, so uh, part one is now uploading YouTube as we speak. I'm check. I'm before I publish it. I'm because I don't want a bunch of people going. Why does it look like crap? The HD is done. Okay, well I'm gonna go ahead and publish this yet. Uh, let's see. Quit out of here. Am I on? Am I on? Okay. Mic is working. Streaming. Recording. Chat is up. Okay, so earlier this morning, we uh, kind of did you know block a little bit of block out talk, a little bit of refine talk, a little bit of base talk. Uh, what I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to publish this video. So we'll make it public. Um, done. Save. Publish anyways. It may not publish anytime soon, but uh, let's go ahead and just real quickly, let's make a thumbnail. I'm going to open up Photoshop. -y. Hey everybody, let's get rocking and rolling. Okay, so we got Photoshop here. Um, let's let's make this a little bit better to look at. So you're gonna see, uh, we were talking earlier, D for dynamic here. So we go in here to geometry and we can say, uh, you know, we, like we were doing earlier, crease, part one, I should say, part one we talked about creasing and dynamic subdivision. So we're gonna say uh, crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four, just to give this a nice uh, look. And we're gonna do that for all of these. So we're gonna go in here to solo mode. You're also gonna see I have polygroups on here. So I can do a real quick under the crease menu. There's a crease PG, crease Paul Gabri or crease polygroup. And we're gonna hit D for dynamic. And again, crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four. And that's not a global, you know, it could be like crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, depending on how soft you want that resulting uh, mesh to be. But basically what I'm doing, if I hit D here, it's just giving this a little bit of a nicer look and allowing us to see what it would look like if we went through and subdivided this up just a bit. So just real quick, uh, crease, dynamic, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. And if it misses any creasing or grabs too many creases, let's say crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four, and then go through here and just hover, Z molar brush, B, Z, M, B for brush, Z for all your Z, Brushes that start with Z and then M is Z modeler. Hover over an edge, crease, edge, hold down Alt, uncrease, and then you can go through here and you can crease or increase uh, based on, you know, whatever your, and let's do a crease, edge, loop, partial here. There we go, let's crease all this here. Uh, whatever your reference says. Speaking of reference, we have, okay, details, we good? Okay, I'll leave this up. And we don't need this, is working? Yeah, all right, we're good. Okay, so up to reference we got Miro open and we're gonna go through here and if we want to see his knees for example there we go and in fact I think I've actually got it broken down so this is our pool of reference and then uh, you know up here we got some models and then we got some art station pages and the cool thing about Miro's and go through here is like oh where did this come from just click that art station link and you can see hey Joez you know so you can go through there and check out all their stuff so Miro's very cool there's a seven part I believe series on my YouTube channel on how to use Miro and the cool stuff I can do. So if we go through here and I can go down here to legs and feet, we can just very quickly kind of zoom in and see like what's going on uh, with these legs and feet. So I'm gonna be referring to this, not on the screen necessarily, but it's gonna be right down here where I can grab it and uh, it'll be easily available to me. So if you're wondering where I'm deciding where to crease and where not to crease, that's where. Uh, so again, we're just trying to get something presentable here. Uh, something representative of what it's going to look like smooth and using our you know, basically just using crease tolerance the more the lower that crease tolerance the more edges it's going to grab um, and then also if you have polygroups built in while you're building this thing uh, that'll just use those so again you know let's hit d on those hands the hands aren't done at all so we'll be spending a little bit of time on that just crease two and three and then crease oops that one oh damn <laughs> I undid and we did a uh, damn we did a move okay here's what we can do let's go into our quick saves because I know we were just sitting here for a bit let's see quick save let's reload this in and that'll also clear our memory out too so we won't have that happen again uh, we have perspective turned on okay that's fine so D crease two and three uh, again all I'm doing this for is just for something representative, but also uh, just so I have a, also a thumbnail to put on YouTube. 
Uh, crease poly group probably should have been okay there. Two and three. And then here's the chest plate panels. So if we get here again, if we hit D and we do a crease poly group, that'll kind of round those edges. But if I want those to be creased corners, I can just use my crease tolerance. And all that's under your crease geometry crease menu. Two and three. Um, so D and D. This stuff we rebuilt. Uh, a little more detailing we need to do on these faces, but just as far as like general uh, shapes, we went through and rebuilt those this morning. And if you're ever going to Boolean stuff, I would suggest not doing that crease fall off. I would leave those creases up at 15, get a really sharp corner, and then uh, Boolean. So we'll get into a little bit of that today, too, of when and where you might want to have creasing not uh, dynamic. Oh, we have actual subdivisions on here. Let's delete lower. And here, D, crease PG. I know this is boring, but just give me a second. Two, three, crease PG, and then D for his little lenses here. This might be a little tricky place. Uh, let's see. So these are actually rounded. So you're going to see when you crease these, they grab those corners. You just go in here and say crease edge, hold down Alt, uncrease those edges, and then two and three. Yeah, that seems right. This is a little backpack. I got to figure out how to connect these things up. Um, and Again, crease, two, three, crease, D, crease, PG. And this is a custom menu, so you can hop over. And let me give you those links real quick. You all know the drill if you're on my channel. Uh, maybe not. So if you go to my RStation page here, here's the intro to ZBrush stuff. You can click on here. Click on the upper right-hand corner, 50 videos to get started. And then any of the new What's New series, all right here, the little pages turned down. You can check those out and get caught up on... ZBrush and how it works. And then same thing on my YouTube channel. There's a bunch of playlists. Here, the Big Blue Genie has all my live stream full episodes. So you can start there. Um, on my YouTube channel, if you're ever like, uh, God, what were we doing? Dynamic. You just turn on dynamic. This actually show up cloth as well. Um, but here's dynamic subdivisions increasing. So a whole bunch of videos on what I'm talking about. If you just want to search by keywords that come out of my mouth. I'm doing good, Morpheus. Excellent. You, bro. Glad you're making it here. Hello from Thailand. Uh, you missed my question on the other stream by a hair. Shout it back out. Oh, here we go. Do you have a good way to do wavy metal feathers uh, for a night helmet for useful space marine chapters? Uh, wavy metal feathers, I'm not sure about. I mean, sure, there's, there's ways to do that anyway. So it's called a... Let me copy this. Because I'm going to be putting on his chest, I'll be doing something like this. And if anybody here knows a bunch about, uh, oh yeah, these are cool. Yeah, it, it'll be very similar to this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, these ones, heck, these ones I might not even model. You know, and we're also doing the miniature sculpting, so we're I'm going to be playing it pretty fast and loose and just looking at my thicks and thins and trying to get big blocky shapes in there. A little bit different how I would do than how I would do a cinematic asset, which I also might do with this guy because he's just so fun. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're, I'm going to put some feathers on his chest and I think it'll follow the same process-ish. Here, uh, oops, uncrease all, crease two. And like I said, I know this is boring, but uh, possibly a necessary evil. And it is also going to give us an idea of what things need to have, where our thicknesses need to go and where we might need to mush some stuff into place here. Uh, and also support loops where, where some of those may need to go. And what's going to end up happening just as a sneak preview is I am, let's increase the tolerance down quite a bit dynamic. And we're going to go in here. Um, easy to catch all those corners. Not this one crease edge. So if I hit D for dynamic here, it'll hold those edges, but as soon as I go to like, you know, crease level of three, smooth level of four, it might start melting those corners too much. That's when you would put in a control loop, just do an insert loop there, and uh, you should be good to go. Crease PG, two and three, two and three. Uh, let's do, and if, it, if I don't have polygroups, obviously I can't crease polygroups. So this is when I go into group by normals, and then hit D for dynamic, and then crease PG. 
Okay, I think we're almost done. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Two and three, and I published this video just now, so hopefully that's up and running so you can check that. Check out how we got to where we are now. Everything else is fine. On these things, you can actually go in here, instead of doing like a dynamic, and then, you know, this one I would do a crease all, and then crease level three, smooth level four. You can certainly do that. You can also do, let's turn our smooth and crease down, you can do dynamic Q grid. So here, we can go through here and you can dial in a Q grid and then a coverage. So you can go through here and just dial these in and you're gonna see right now it's bevel. You can do a bevel and a chamfer or just a chamfer to get smoother or a more rounded fall off there on your edges. So you can use those to your advantage if you'd like. Um, okay, so I think we're oh, better. So let's go in here. I'm gonna have uh, floor turned on, perspective turned on. Let's just go in here and do a quick uh, BPR render. Okay. Um, I'm just doing a window shift S screen grab just because I don't I'm not doing anything fancy control N let's do a 1280 by 720 paste brush alt and I'll, I'll do a better render once we're once we get rocking and rolling but this will be a good enough start here oops uh, control T let's do a levels here just to get it to pop a little bit. And um, this is gonna be the world's most boring thumbnail, but it'll be a good placeholder. Uh, and then we're gonna go say, uh, <laughs> in the SpongeBob font, um, Ultramarine part one, control A, let's just, let's dump this down to whatever. Come on. Oof. That is an ugly one, isn't it? Bold. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, you know what? Let's let's spice this up just a tiny bit. Let's automate real quickly. We'll go in here to analog. Because this is just uh, nasty. Zoom out just a little bit. Just give me a second. Eh, maybe not that much. This is the Nick Selective Tool Analog Effects Pro. Let's go in here to uh, Wet Plate. Yeah, basic adjustments. We can add a little more, eh, a little bit of saturation back. Let's go into Bokeh. Let's make it so we can actually see our guy a little bit. Eh, we don't need to see him that much. Let's make this radius a little smaller here. Um, any film type is fine, lens vignette. You know what, let's go in here to camera kit. Let's add a light leaks and let's add a, you know, let's add a frames too. We're gonna make this just totally nasty. All right, all right, let's grab this frame here. Yeah, nasty. Fine, whatever. And then film type lens vignette, light leaks. Let's not do soft, let's do crisp. Let's just blast him with some light leaks here. Okay, fine, whatever. Okay. Throw that onto our desktop here as um, YouTube thumb. So that way, when people come to YouTube on my desktop here, Okay, save. Okay, HD still processing. Oh, I'm gonna yell that for that. Why does this video suck? Sorry, guys. Okay. And you know what? Let's go ahead and drop that into our live stream full episodes. Done. Save. Kill this. Don't need it. Don't need it. All right. We're good to go. So let's talk a little bit about ZBrush now that we're in here. Okay, we're modeling, right? Uh, okay, first thing we need to do is fill in his body. Go ahead and shut this down. So in his body here, this is really interesting, I think. Uh, and again, I, I don't know why there's not a million movies made with the Warhammer stuff because they are they're so lore heavy. I went down the rabbit hole for like three hours and I still knew like just scratch the surface. So underneath his bodysuit here, you're going to see these big ribs, uh, kind of like a little Crytek suit looking thing. 
So that's essentially what you're going to be seeing under his armor once it gets placed on. He's got like sub armor and then the big blocky armor. So basically tubes. Now, how big those tubes are, you know, if, again, if this is, we started out in Fusion 360, we brought in our 32 millimeter base. Let's get this out of the way here. Um, you know, our 32 millimeter base, he's about 32 millimeters high. So you got to be careful with what kind of detail you're putting in here. And we're going to be playing it fast and loose. We're going to be mostly doing sculptural detail. This isn't a cinematic model. This is a miniature. So again, I'm going to be dynameshing and just playing again, real fast and loose with this. Let's hit D for dynamic here, two and three. Okay. And yeah, I just got to keep going. Oh, you know what? Are we missing something? Let's look, uh, turn everything on. Okay. Oh, this one just needs to be copied over. Uh, ge geometry modified topology, mirror and weld across the X, turn on X, tap X to go turn on uh, transform, activate symmetry in the X, uh, D for dynamic, and we're okay. So a little bit bigger on the outside. Uh, actually, those are both supposed to be the same size. Uh, I'll mess with that in a minute. Okay, so let's fill in his body with something. I have a head in here. So if I go in here to his um, mask here and we turn that off, you're gonna see I do have a head sitting in here, but he doesn't have a body. Um, I could mush a body around and, but you know what, let's, re, let's reconstruct uh, his body here. So here's something we can do. Let's do a, I'm gonna do a save as, and I'm just gonna drop this in here as, um, Ultramarine Brock out zero two. Let's do so I can always go back to that subtool. Okay, so in dynamic subdivision apply all under Z plugin, you can download a plugin utility called Clean Tool Utility. And down here, there's a dynamic subdivision to actual subdivisions. You can do that for all of your meshes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit W. I'm going to go in here to move multiple. I'm going to hold down Control Shift. I'm going to grab. Come on, select rectangle. I'm gonna grab all his, of this base here, I'm gonna hit Control F. Let's call this base. So now all of uh, the bases are in one subtool here. So I can just get, hide them basically. Turn off move multiple. Okay, so we have these here visible. Um, you know what, I don't wanna mess with this one. So I'm gonna say copy tool, go in here and I'm gonna say paste tool and that's gonna paste all 56 of those. Uh, and I'm gonna say uh, delete all to get rid of that out of there. And we don't even need this, we'll say delete folder. Okay, so we have a copy of this with all of these dynamic subdivision things uh, here and they're not, they're not, they're still a preview. So shift D, I'll turn it off, D, I'll turn it back on. If I wanna make all this real geometry, I can go in here, clean tool utility, dynamic subdivision to SD all, and that'll convert all of my dynamic subdivisions to real geometry. And the reason I'm doing this is because uh, I'm gonna go in here to merge visible, and then we're gonna say delete all. So now our merged one is gonna be nice and smooth. You're gonna see all the places where you had flipped geometry, no big deal, turn on X symmetry, you could just grab a little piece of that, control shift A, uh, flip, display properties way down here, display properties flip to get those the right way. Any other issues? Okay, and the backpack, we don't need it all. So control shift A, delete hidden. So now we can reverse engineer a body out of this. So let's go in here. And actually we don't even need the head. The head's already in there. Alt, control shift A, control shift Alt, delete hidden. Okay, so I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna do a very low res dynamesh resolution at 128 or whatever. And that's gonna be the start of our body. I'm gonna go in here and inflate any of these areas here. Just dynamesh as I go and then I'm gonna smooth. So basically, I'm going through here and as I smooth, I'm basically creating an envelope of where a human being could be. And they are beefy boys. If you go through here and look at him before he got his suit up, I mean, this guy's, he's, <laughs> And also the proportions too are gonna to be a little different. When we're talking about tabletop, the heads are huge, you know, just so they can read from a distance. This one's a little bit more of hero is a cinematic, so it's a little more of a heroic proportions. This head's a little smaller. So we're probably gonna end up scaling up that head quite a bit. Just FYI. So now again, reverse engineering a body into 
the armor. Now let's do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. X symmetry is turned on. Smooth this down. Inflate brush, smooth and inflate. So now we basically have a little goopy human being inside. And I'm going to use this as like a base for the bodysuit, essentially. Uh, the hands we don't really need. That's going to be taken care of separately. So Geonge Modified Topology Delete Hidden. Control drag to read mesh, And then there we go. So we have filler, essentially. So let's go back to our working file here. I'm going to, you know, we got this one here. Let's just insert it. There's our filler. And then now we can use this as a basis for our bodysuit. So I'm just going to hit move brush and maybe Damien standard or standard brush to kind of cut in a little bit here. Smooth, redyna mesh. We're just going to move this just so it's kind of sitting underneath. Um, and honestly, even if I was doing a cinematic version, I would probably start out with something like this just to give me a solid mesh underneath to play with. Let's see, does he have a little butt plate in there? What is that? Oh yeah, I guess he does have a little. Hmm, that doesn't seem. That doesn't seem right. That seems. Like, I think that should be closer to the legs. Okay. While I'm seeing stuff. Oh, you know what? Is this even an older version? Oh, you know, I guess I kept it. I'm gonna hold down Control. So now we're back to the version where you know D. I had to do Shift D. We didn't. We didn't apply those subdivisions. So we're gonna go through here to mask lasso. Control Tab to invert that, and I'm just gonna use. Oh, my move brush here. And I'm going to get this butt plate a little closer out here to the legs. And then alt tap here and then play brush. We can build up and smooth. Again, we're just trying to get some filler where it should be. All righty. Knock it back, knock it back, knock it back. Smooth it, smooth it, smooth it. This will also be good too when we if we dynamesh this all together or after we pose it and stuff, having something in here and available to kind of act as a blocker for like booleans or you know 3D printing and stuff, always helpful. Now these armpits, hmm, they're a little bit trying. So we're gonna go through here, we're gonna separate this armor. Control shift drag with select lasso, we're gonna say split hidden, control drag, uh, just to have these as a separate mesh. I'm not trying to go in there and add armpits. I'm just trying to get some filler going. So alt tap here, and then now it's a little bit easier. And you know what, let's add a little bit resolution to that Dynamesh. Dynamesh is of course underneath your geometry. Oh, you know where it is. Dynamesh, Beep. there we go. So again, we'll knock this back. We've got our little chest plates here. And these are actually, these things have names. Uh, let's find out. So I have a little technical section here. So here's our, our pool, and then I have the breakdown of all the pieces. So chest, backpack, shoulders, waist, all that good stuff. Oh, we got to do the weapon too. What weapon do you guys want to do? I'm thinking... Stormbolter. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. I'm going to say download. And I'm going to throw this move here to my desktop. So when we need to make this, we'll we'll just have that available to us. Okay. So again, D for dynamic. Actually, let's go ahead and clean this up. This this kind of like dips in a little bit here. So uh, one thing we do, we can hold on control shift, isolate this, delete hidden. Let's try a zero mesh or half. There we go. A little less geometry to worry about. And then if we want to get that back, we can say extrude and then again, flip. And then we'll just run a crease dynamic there we go. So we're back where we started. Just a little bit of a cleaner geometry there. And I'll move this in and move this out. Okay, so we got body suit. Body suit, let's raise that resolution just a tiny bit like we did on the body. Looks like his arms are kind of skinny. We'll change that too. And we got a little piece here. Let's go ahead and say dynamic, crease tolerance up two and three. Alt tap. Uh, let's turn his shoulder pads off. Let's just alt tap to select any of these sub tools here. Let's say I'm um, going here with our clay brush. So this is our shoulder. Yeah, all of this can be knocked down. 
and I have smooth stronger turned on underneath your smooth uh, underneath your brush settings here if you hold down sh shift and go to smooth brush modifiers you can change your weighted smooth mode to one and that'll give you a little more oomph to your smooth brush you can hold down shift and change your in Z intensity obviously so you can smooth less but uh, it's going to solo mode let's knock this back All right, all right, all right. Let's go in here to mirror, mirror and weld. Make sure Elson is turned off so it's not on the local axis in that instance. Okay, I think we've got a little bodysuit in here for tubes and we'll get, we'll see how fancy we need to get with that. Um, or how precise we wanna be. So for instance, uh, if we want these, if we just, if we don't want it to be precise, we can just crank up our resolution just a bit and then go in here with like our Damien standard, turn on transparency with ghost turned on. And you can literally just go in here and boom, you got tubes, right? Uh, and in fact, I might even do that uh, just as a way to block out my idea. And once it's there, I can then make the decision to go, you know what? I don't need to take it any further than this. I think it'll work for what my purposes are which in this case is a miniature, or I can go, well, at least I know, it doesn't look great, but at least I know which direction I want the tube. So if I want to rebuild these or remake these, um, I'm certainly able to do so. So let's go in here, move this here. And I'm also thinking about thickness. So when we first set up this file, we're working in millimeters. So I imported those from Fusion 360. So we're working at a millimeter scale. And the cool thing about that is that's kind of ZBrush's native scale. So hit W and then Y to turn on uh, turn on transpose so I can drag these out uh, every one of these major lines and we did a little bit of fooling with this so underneath preferences transpose units I took down the minor ticks I don't need to know what a tenth of a millimeter is so zero minor ticks one major tick so every single one of these ticks is a millimeter so if you want to measure anything you can go through here and um, this is this might actually be where it might be let's say half a millimeter so here we're gonna say minor ticks we'll say one minor tick per does that give me a half? Nope. We need to do two minor ticks per. There you go, so there's a half a millimeter. So now when you go through here, you're gonna see, okay, this is about half a millimeter on the final print. So just something to keep you, and if you wanted to like model a banana to scale and import it into your scene or something, that can also help, or a pack of cigs or a can of Coke or whatever. Uh, speaking of, uh, weirdly speaking of that, <laughs> if you go here, uh, you know, if you do 3D print, and this is something I mentioned in the last one, but might've gotten buried. Uh, if you go 3D print on my channel, we've got the Benny 5 down here. We've got the Elegoo Mars. Those are both like, God, probably 30 minutes long of just going through the pro unboxing and printing and stuff. Um, and then you've also got the Lychee Slicer. Oh, I was hoping it would be in a full playlist, easy for you people. Uh, here playlists, there's the Lychee Slicer full playlist here. And at the very bottom of this, you're gonna have a 3D print setup. This talks about scale and build volumes and stuff like this, and how to you know slice and set up your mesh for printing. But also in here, you can see it in this here, there is a preview in Lychee where you have a can of Coke, a banana, and a pin, just to kind of remind you like, oh, this thing's the size of a chicken egg, because you'll get really caught up in details and inscribing and blah, blah, blah. And then you'll back out and you'll be like, oh, that's just gonna be noise on my 32 millimeter tall 3D print. So um, just keep that in mind, shall we? And again, I'm not a miniature person. I want to be badly. I just, I, one day, one day I'll be a miniature person and I'll be painting them and 3D printing stuff. It's gonna be awesome. But until then, I'm just gonna live vicariously through all of you. Um, but we'll, we'll 3D print this off. Why not? It'll be easy. But I wanna get more into it. So now, uh, again, we're just looking at our reference, and again, I'm not gonna pull it up every time I look at my reference, but just letting you know where my eyes go afterwards. So if I'm looking down here, looks like they go across this way. So again, we're just getting an idea. Let's turn on transparency with ghost so we can sculpt through our object. So here, yep. just using Damien's standard to kind of go through and just kind of pull in a direction of where I want these tubes to go. And then uh, down the butt here, they kind of go this way-ish, it looks like. So something like this. And they all seem pretty regular, which I suppose is fine for our purposes. And then on the waist, they kind of go up 
and into this area. And it looks like this might be a little bit in the way too. Let's go ahead and smooth this back a little bit. And then again, they kind of swoop up, kind of like a rib cage, like this. And again, we're, we're talking miniatures here. So instead of doing like maybe eight or nine tubes, like it is in the cinematic, I'm gonna do like three, um, just to get a nice big beefy read. Uh, and then in these arms here, are they lateral? Let's see, arms, arms, arms. You know, not getting a real big read on that. Uh, I'm just gonna guess. Let's just go this way. Uh, you know what, let's crank the resolution up. Where actually, here's a cool thing. So if we wanna match the resolution of this object, we can hit, uh, let's show where you where it'll be for you. So Dynamesh resolution, you can click and drag off onto an object and then uh, maybe not. Let's alt tap this one. Resolution is 600. You can also click and drag and it'll pick the resolution. So this one we'll just say, uh, resolution of 600 or so and then D transparency ghost all righty and then the neck oh boy let's see if we can get a down shot because um, yeah there's like an inner ring on this thing so let's add it so we have this geometry here let's duplicate this off well first actually let's delete that and you know what um, we have the ultramarine in the base. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I'm going to alt tap here. I'm going to thicken this up a little bit. And luckily we have polygroups here. So we can go through here and say, and a polygroup is just, and if I didn't have polygroups, it'd be easy enough just to go in here and say group by normals based on that angle threshold. So all my inside and outside are same polygroup. Geometry modified topology, mirror and weld because it's not a mirrored operation when you do that. Um, extrude or Q mesh, doesn't really matter in this case, polygroup all. Uh, Z model rush, BZM, hover over face, space bar, extrude, polygroup all. Then just start extruding or Q meshing and then hold down shift and you can increase uh, or decrease. You're just pulling along the surface normal basically. Uh, if you wanna clean this up, you can actually run a quick polish by features just with closed circle to maintain your volumes and that'll smooth out in between your polygroup borders there. Okay. Okay, so we got this one. It's nice and thick. And then we're going to say, let's need to come out a little bit more. Let's, I'm going to pull it out just to that a, a little bit more. And then we're going to make this a little thinner because we're going to drop in uh, another version of this. So we're going to duplicate this off, hit W. Um, oh, W. Let's go out of, let's go in, back into gizmo mode, out of transpose mode. Uh, turn off X symmetry. Go to unmatch mesh center, turn X symmetry back on. And now I'm going to pull this in, pull this, actually you can do it across two axes at once. Just hold down alt on this axis and that'll pull them in on both sides at once. And we'll push this in just a tiny bit here. And then we'll thin this one out. And I don't even know if we should thin it out. Miniatures, man. Keep them thick. There we go. And then again, D, it'll inherit all the dynamic properties because it's just a duplicate. So here and then D for dynamic. And we got to figure out, you know, let's just punch a hole through here. So this is where we're going to start playing it fast and loose, I think. With Dynamesh. Ooh, should we? No, not not quite yet. Let's start, let's start adding details now. And by details, I mean just something other than just the pure block out. So let me go to my um, backpack reference here and let's get cracking so for this backpack uh, let's say uh, crease two three crease tolerance down four and five maybe geez okay so that's the overall shape and on here there's actually going to be kind of a um, kind of a built up panel along in here so let's say uh, let's duplicate this off let's do shift D I'm going to say alt tap this panel control shift drag judge modified poly to delete hidden let's do an inset single uh, inset each poly we'll inset this in just a little bit and we'll just say delete hidden and then Q mesh this out so that'll be that base that these kind of sit on and then I need to make sure that these 
fit nicely in here. So we'll just do a little bit of move to get those in there. Now these have little slats in them and now we're working at small scale here. So I'm already getting nervous uh, if this is even gonna be able to pull it off. But in here we're gonna say, um, we'll do another inset. Instead of each poly, we'll do inset region, uh, inset polygroup all, and we'll just do a little inset in here. And then uh, instead of, you know, we can we can do an extrude or a Q mesh, but that's just gonna pull it along the surface normal, which is what I don't want. It's going back through the object. So instead let's hit um, transpose polygroup ball. We'll just tap here. And then I'm going to hold down control and drag. That's going to add an edge ring and just allow me to pull in the direction of that object. Uh, so now when I hit D for dynamic, that's got Q grid on. That's not smooth subdiv, that's Q grid. So we can change the coverage here. And then it'll kind of give us a little fall off. So now this has little slats in it, um, which is fine. We'll say duplicate this off, shift D. I'm gonna steal this piece of geometry. So we're gonna alt tap it, isolate it. Geometry modify the polygon, delete hidden. Q mesh, polygroup all, I'll just pull this up a little bit. W, let's alt tap here to move along that surface normal. And we'll pull this up. And then control drag out a copy. Center these a little bit, W. Let's push along this surface normal. So we're gonna alt tap here. We're just gonna push these back. So this bottom, you know what, let's do an auto groups here. So as we push this in, we can say, okay, you're good to go. And then W, control tap this one. Again, pull along that surface normal, you're good to go. Let's control drag, W, down. And then uh, control drag, you know what, we can, eh, I'll just scooch it along this way. Control, uh, is that right? Yeah. Control drag down. Oops, I can use the arrow there. Control drag and we'll scooch it into place. Not being super precise, but that's okay. Uh, and if you start scaling, you're gonna see it's gonna go across or out from the world axis. Just turn on LSIM and that'll be the local axis for this object so we can scooch this out. There we go. And then again, I'm gonna play it fast and loose. Move brush. Auto masking, topological. There is a topological brush if you feel like digging for it. I have my brush options open so I can just quickly do it. And then I'm just gonna kind of even that spacing out. So now we've got our little slats in here. They follow generally the geometry. And I think from the back, can you see them? Yeah, you can actually. They're, they're a nice design element from the from the back view too. So let's pull these out just a little bit more. All right, back in. Okay, yeah, that's gonna be a nightmare for uh, 3D printing probably with the resolution we're working at, but we might change that. Okay, so we've got this little thing built in. Let's go move this back just a tiny bit. And then we've got this, we've got uh, some details going. We've got this thing here. So now this has a chunk, let me show you what I'm, hold on. Uh, 40 and there we go. So uh, just looking at this here, we've got, you know, these little indentions, these divots taken out and then a little, you know, ring. And then it's got one, two, three uh, pieces along here. So let's do that. Um, it's the easiest way to do this. I'm going to do some Booleans for this one because uh, we want I still want to keep it nice and tidy if I can. Uh, I don't want to jump into Dynamesh just yet. Uh, this one we can knock off, I think. Let's say three, two or three, so this will go four. Yeah, that's fine, a little bit nicer. Okay, so now this one, uh, okay, yeah, we're fine. So D for dynamic, I'm gonna keep this cranked at 15, smooth subdiv at three, which is fairly high. And then I'm gonna start booleaning stuff out. We're just gonna use cylinder. So I'm gonna go in here to my, I mean, you can do BI brush insert primitives. I have a custom brush with some primitives built into it. Um, now, if I start dragging, this is going to want to stick to that surface normal. I can drag over here where it'll kind of be flat. I can also go in here to the picker and we can say orientation. Just click once right here. That's the orientation of the uh, brush. If you just tap this, it'll keep it straight. So no matter where I drag, it'll keep it straight out at us. So we can say split mass points. Uh, let's do shift D. We'll push this uh, into place here. And again, oops, let's go down the middle. Uh, Make it so it, go, it cuts all the way through the object. Uh, we're gonna control drag out a copy. And you know what, let's duplicate this off. Let's go to unmesh mesh center. Let's, uh, let's turn off X symmetry, go to unmesh mesh center, rotate this. We'll use my hotkey for subtool merge down. 
and then uh, I'm going to put this below. We're going to turn off everything except for these two. Set this to subtractive. Go in here to live boolean here. So now those are going to cut in and it's live. So you can move these wherever you'd like. And we can just start evaluating, you know, is this the right amount of cut? And I, it's fine. I think it's fine. Uh, for these cylinders here, let's hit D for dynamic. You're going to see it's going to start scalloping. Let's go in here just so you can see it. It's going to start scalloping those edges. Just run a crease, some geometry crease here, and then now you'll get a nice clean cut out of this object. Uh, also important, we want polygroups on all sides that are relevant. So blue and red, and then on these sides that we're cutting in, that's all one polygroup. That's fine. So uh, now that we have this and everything's showing, we have live boolean turned on, we can go down here. There's a couple different ways we could have done this, but one way just the way we have it set up now is we go down here to uh, Boolean, dynamic subdiv, make Boolean mesh. I'm gonna do an insert, grab that U mesh that it made. I just popped it out here in my tool palette. So insert that U mesh here. We don't need these working meshes anymore. So we'll just delete, delete. So we have this one here. Um, and you might be thinking, wow, that's pretty crappy geometry. No problem. Um, all we got to do is we have X symmetry turned on. We might be able to do X and Y symmetry. Nah, just screw it. Uh, zero mesher, keep group smooth groups down to zero. Booleans create very smooth groups. No need to worry about that. Uh, depth size down to zero, nice even quads. Just zero mesh this. Um, in fact, if you want to even simplify this even more so it doesn't have to think too hard, I can get rid of this back and we can just cap that later. But it seems to be doing fine. So we'll do zero mesher half and we'll get this as low as we feel necessary. We'll go ahead and increase PG, dynamic, crease level of two, smooth set of three. Now we have that little back piece with a little bit of love. Now it looks like, are these bolts? Or are those just round? Okay, these just look like round. Um, oh man, you know what? I need to put, I am constantly using that shape. I'm going to add this shape. We're going to make it once. Um, in fact, we could, we could even steal it. Um, I'll show you where you can steal it if you want to. It's easy enough to make, but let's talk technique. Here's a star. Uh, BI brush insert. Um, what am I looking for? Model kit. Your, your icon's going to be different than mine. Sorry about that. Uh, hit uh, M and you can go through here and you can choose like a fastener five or you can go up here and you can choose, you know, fastener five, six or seven. Um, once you find one you like, uh, if you want to steal it, you can hit W and click any one of these. It'll cycle through whatever you're selecting here. For instance, this one. Um, but we want to steal fastener five. There's actually a Z plugin IMM extractor. You can extract every single one of these to its own subtool in a stack and then you can modify them as needed. It'll even have the names for you. Oh, I don't need to do that. So we'll go in here. We'll hit unify, deformation unify. So we stole this fastener here. Um, I don't like, this is fine for some purposes. I'm going to do a quick group by normals. We're going to say cube mesh polygroup all. Just pull this back, give myself a little breathing room. And I'm going to get rid of this here. Delete hidden. Go ahead and say close convex hole. And then if I want to make this, we might just do like an inset here. Just to kind of make sure I don't get scalloping. So now we can say, you know, crease PG, D for dynamic looks great. If I want to add it to my any brush here, let's go ahead and name it Rivet, uh, and then we can add it. Um, how many spans is this? I don't even know how many spans that is. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to grab a cylinder 16 from my um, my custom menu. You can even go in here to W, hit the gear icon, and then say poly cylinder. No, the poly cylinder will give you these ends. You can also go in here and say cylinder 3D, dial in how many, um, you can even do an inner radius if you wanted to. Uh, each divide of 16 is fine. Um, so you can use this to your advantage if you'd like. Let's go in here and we'll say insert, single edge loop, hold down alt. Let's do a group by normals. Let's get rid of that top group. Geometry modified topology, delete hidden, close convex hole. We'll just pull out and round it off a couple, make it its own poly group. So now I got poly groups on all sides. Uh, again, D for dynamic, crease PG if you want. So that's another way to make a rivet. So we have my custom menu here. I want to add a rivet to it. There's our rivet. Let's just do a unify just because it's fun. So here's my rivet. I'm going to hit uh, B, create insert mesh append. So now at the very end, 
I've got a rivet that I can use now. I'm going to go in here to Brush, Save As, make sure I save over where this is, which is ZBrush 2022 ZBrushes. Um, nope, 2022 Z Startup Brush Presets IMM Base Primitives, this one. Save over that. So now whenever I start up ZBrush, this brush automatically comes in. It's got a hotkey assigned to it, and it has a rivet. So I never have to do that again. And if you, I don't know, remind me where this video is so I can show people where that is. So uh, we have this one selected. We can go through here and we can add rivets. If I want to make them all the same size, I can just make my brush size the size of the rivet that I want. So maybe this big and just hold down Control, and that'll snap it to the right size. Of course, you can duplicate uh, these as needed. Um, and let's control shift a let's split hidden let's alt tap this one here I'm gonna do a quick uh, auto groups geometry modified topology mirror and weld across the x-axis W control tap these so I can go through here and just quickly arrange these as needed okay I think that'll work anyway that was a long story for rivets wasn't it okay so this here I'm seeing in my reference is actually a little bit more rounded so I'm gonna go in here to edge Crease, edge, hold down alt, D for dynamic, there we go. Oh, we got some details on this bad boy. So, um, and this, you know, if we were gonna 3D print this thing and they'll, you don't need to necessarily make different objects, you can just inset and extract and stuff like that. But if we ever wanted to have quick access to like filling maybe this ball shape with um, the shape we're about to make, making it a separate object is just, it gives you more, more leeway, we should say. So uh, we'll duplicate this off so that we have a, the same thing. We're going to solo mode, control shift tap, this end poly group, delete hidden. Let's go in here, let's do yeah, Q mesh poly group all first. We'll pull out a nice, again, we're working small, so we want to maybe over crank the thickness a bit. Um, and then we want to punch in a hole. So we can go through here, we can say inset poly group all. I'm going to do legacy here, let's do shift D. You can see what we're doing. Uh, again, keep it thicker than you probably think you should. Um, and then now you can go through here. If you wanted to, you can say Q mesh poly group ball and just pull this in. Uh, or if you want to punch all the way through, we can just do an inset on the back, just tap to get the same amount, and then Q mesh poly group ball, just pull through. And that'll sew those up for you. So now you have this. You can hit D, crease PG, all that good stuff. And this one will say two and three. Okay, so now this thing has slats down again we're printing small so maybe not one two three four five maybe i don't know maybe we can get away with it maybe not um it also has a little bit of an inset here and that's just the thing for aesthetics if you're baking a normal map what i might suggest is go in here and say let's do a quick scale uh, edge loop complete and we'll just kind of pull this in a little bit just to kind of give you a little bit of fall off here and then if we're talking about like mold making and pulling things out of a whatever uh, the mold you might having a little bit of a, a uh, what would you call it a little fall off you know might be beneficial to you as well so whatever so here we got these now we need to make some slats just that's just going to be a quick hmm you know what let's do it this way Let's alt tap this one again. We've already got a flat plane in here, right? So let's go ahead and duplicate this off again. Control shift tap. Geometry modified topology delete hidden. And let's just do one side for now. I'm going to turn off X symmetry, grab one side, delete hidden. Um, I'm a, I need a little more resolution, so I'm going to hit control D a bunch of times. We're going to go down here to delete lower. Control shift. Huh. Let's do slice curve. Let's turn off line so I can see what we're doing here. And if I hold down control shift and hold down spacebar, there's a brush radius. So as I go and slice through, it will give me, see this here? It'll give me a little brush radius slice through here. So that's one way you can kind of quickly uh, go through here and um, get some slices. So again, and they're all gonna be uniformly sliced here. So, I don't know, something like this. Hold down control shift, we'll grab this one, this one, this one, and this one. Geometry, that's fine. Delete hidden. Um, Shift D, there we go. Zero measure, let's see if this will work. Sometimes not so great. Uh, zero measure, groups off, depths down to zero. 
half, 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 half. Yeah, stress it. Okay, that's good enough. And if you wanted to go through here and simplify these a bit, it should be fairly easy. Let's go in here to collapse and edge down and over, over, oops, um, over. And let's see, can we do this? Hmm, just trying to think. I was hoping I'd be able to do like a insert single edge loop, hold down alt, but it's gonna get rid of my corners, isn't it? Um, you can do it through here. Beep, boop, beep. Go and clean those up. You may even be able to go in here to geometry edge loop and say delete loops based on angle threshold, but that doesn't seem to be doing much. Hmm. I'll leave those for now. Maybe we'll revisit those. If we want to add a little thickness, Q mesh, polygon ball, or all polygons, and we'll just pull out for now. And then uh, W, again, I'm playing it fast and loose. Take your time, do a good job. Don't be like me. And then turn off LSIM, Judge Modified Topology, Mirror and Weld. We got a little detail in there. Uh, moving right along, this thing has a cut in along the top. Little cut in with these little notches in here. So I think we got a pretty good idea of where those need to go. Do we need to do a Boolean? Because I mean, at the end of the day, you can make this geometry. You just take a, a brush and just make that panel cut. Um, I always tend to. Do it the hard way uh, or the more involved way <clears throat> but it kind of yields good results sometimes so let me think about this let's do we can even do a knife brush uh, you know what let's just do a boolean that's fine i'm gonna hold down shift shoot it to the bottom here just so we're, this is all we're looking at i'm going to append a cube here so we'll move this cube into place Scale it down. Uh, and if I want nice geometry all over, I'm gonna turn on X symmetry, zero mesh half, that size down to zero, detect edges, and that'll give me new geo. And then we'll scale this in and we'll move it on back. So basically we're gonna have a thing cut through um, our geometry about here and also about, let's turn everything else back on. Go into transparency mode. We have some, it's about, it cuts kind of through the middle of these little doodads we have in here. So it's about here. Um, it does have rounded edges, which we can take care of, but essentially it's just going to slice. Yeah, that's about right. It's going to slice through my, let's move it up just a bit. It's going to slice through my mesh here. So we have uh, D for dynamic, and it, when, it, when we did detect edges, it went ahead and increased. Um, all of our edges for us. Um, but in this case, let's do shift D. Um, let's go through here, we'll say crease, edge loop partial, hold down alt. And now when we hit D, that'll round those corners out for us. So that's essentially what we're trying to punch through. Now I gotta think. Okay, I think I know what I wanna do. So we're gonna make both of these the same polygroup here. We're gonna isolate this, geometry modified topology delete hidden. We'll say Q mesh polygroup ball. We'll pull this in a little bit. Display properties flip. Hold down shift and pull this out a little bit. And that's gonna be what's gonna cut through our object. We're gonna separate this into two separate objects and we're gonna hopefully try and zero mesh that if it plays nicely. Everybody cross your fingers for me. So we have uh, this nice smooth mesh, crease a little 15 all the way up. We're not dealing with little fall offs here. Nice and smooth mesh here. We've got different poly groups on all the relevant angles. Um, in fact, this one, we could probably stand to do a group by normals. Geometry modified topology mirror and weld because that's not a mirrored operation. Um, this can probably be the same. So I'm holding down alt and painting on a poly group and then I'm holding down shift to inherit that poly group. All right. Oh boy. Okay, so let's do it. I'm gonna keep one version of this here. So we're going to duplicate this off and just hide it. And then now we've just got these two showing, right? So I'm gonna turn this to subtractive so we can live Boolean through here. Again, it's live. So if you're looking at this and you're like, actually, now that I look at it, um, these need to be a little bit thinner. You can say, you know, let's go back in here and just thin this out a little bit. But again, remember you're printing miniature, so don't make it too thin. Um, and then now we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say, uh, again, just cause we have these things showing that we did earlier, Boolean dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh, append 
that UMesh result here. So here we go. It's going to solo mode. Check out what we got. Looks pretty decent. Um, we have nice clean cuts through this geometry. We even have nice clean polygroups. So in a perfect world, we could say grab this one. Say I'm going to split this off so we can zero mesh it separately. X symmetry turned on. Uh, zero mesh, keep group smooth groups down to zero, adapt to size down, and we'll just get some new better geometry. And I'm, oops, sorry, half. There we go. So just simplify this geo as much as you deem necessary. Crease PG, crease level of two, smooth so div of three. So now we've got this piece, nice. Now this is the more scary piece that I'm thinking we're gonna have. Um, oops, this is my working file. Here's my file. We have polygroups on all the relevant angles. We have X symmetry turned on. This is where it gets scary to me because this is a very thin mesh. So it being able to, I don't know, it might do a good job. So, uh, and I'm asking a lot of it. So I'm not saying like it's gonna do a bad job. I'm like, more power to you, Zero Mesher. You are a lifesaver and I love you very much. Uh, but I do know I'm asking you to do some really hard stuff. Um, damn. Nice job. All right. <laughs> Crease P, I shouldn't have worried so much. Three, four, oops. Four, three, maybe even two, three. Yeah, man, look at that. Ah, that's ridiculous. Okay, so we got our shapes back. We got a nice Boolean through there. We don't need these working files anymore, so we can just say delete you. Uh, these are good. This one's a working file, deleted. And then this original one we kept, uh, I want to just have something to catch. So Q mesh polygroup all. Um, I'm gonna hold down shift and just pull along that surface normal. Pull along that surface normal. Um, you know what, I wanna do all of these at once. I'm gonna hold down control shift, select lasso, grab this, all the, actually this is easier. Control shift, U, U, control W, make those all one polygroup. So now Q mesh polygroup all, just hold down shift as I push. And that'll just kind of stick everything inside. And then I can just manually go through here and be like, you get up in there. So now I got a little catcher in there. All right, everything back on. Um, and the cool thing about that is we ha have some detail we need to put on here, but I think because we have such nice even geometry, uh, we can just manually go through and put that. So again, looking at our reference, we have one, two, three, four, five little pieces through here. So let's go ahead and put those in. Um, so Shift D, let's see if we can just do it with the existing geo here. Let's turn off light boolean here. Um, so one goes right down the middle and it goes all the way. Nope, it only goes up to, oh, you know what? <sighs> so close yet so far. It actually stops right here. No big deal. Check this out. Let's go through here, let's go to Alt drag here for these polygroups here and then we're going to say q mesh polygroup all pull this back and in fact if um if these aren't because when we zero mesh this we just we zero mesh the entire thing with the thickness let's isolate this judge modified volume delete hidden q mesh that back so that we have the exact same geometry on both sides so now when we go through here and we grab q mesh oops, for these this alt painting. Now when we Q mesh, it should pop all the way through. Boom. Okay. And then these bad boys, these aren't even right. The hell? Control Alt. Who did this block out? Fired. Go through here. Let's turn on L sim. And uh, we have extraneous geometry here. Insert single edge loop. Hold down Alt Alt. We don't need to deal with all that. And I'm kind of pulling the life out of these sometimes. Uh, what the hell? Geometry modified topology mirror and weld. Control Alt W Z scale. There we go. Um, you know, a little bit of inconsistency isn't a bad thing. Um, a lot of times you'd be surprised that having everything perfect actually kind of kills the life of your object here. So feel free to be as precise as you want to, but don't go crazy. Uh, we're going to go through here. We're going to say. Um, let's run dynamic. Let's not do a smooth sub Let's do a Q grid with chamfer and then change that coverage down. There we go. And then now we've got this on both sides. This side um, is just going to be a, a panel, it looks like. So we can go ahead and hit D for dynamic. In fact, we'll just go ahead and split this off. Control Shift A. 
uh, split, hidden, go ahead and run a crease, keep the, get those edges up, and then here, let's go ahead and run a crease here. All right, now we're in good shape. Okay, um, now, Alt, so here's, how close do those get? Pretty close, so Alt, uh, so there's one, two, three, four, five, oh, thank God. Okay, so now, let's think, it just gets punched in, and we've duplicated this, so it should work fine. So Q mesh these through, let's go ahead and run a crease PG, get nice rounded corners on here, and it looks like, again, we're working miniature, so I don't know how crazy you want to get, but it is actually inset, and it's got little t -t 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 um, all the way through here. So actually seeing that, t -t 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 -t, let's undo that real quick, let's duplicate this off. So when I go through here, and again, crease PG, and then, uh, ah, man, I'm so tempted to add that little inside thing, but it's too much that we don't need that. But you know how to now. It's easy. Okay, so now we go back to the one we duplicated, and let's think. Uh, if we want little striations across, which, um, again, if you're 3D printing this, you don't need it. You truly don't. But, or not if you're 3D printing, but if you're printing miniature. Um, but, I mean, again, it's fairly simple to go through here and say... Um, Gosh, a couple different ways we do this. Let's go through here and we'll say bevel, edge loop complete. We'll just kind of pop a little bevel in here. I'm just going to go through and tap so we maintain the same thing. Um, in fact, you know, if this is too many, let's go through here and delete every other one. In fact, we don't even need this middle one. So insert single edge loop, boop, boop, boop. And then uh, every other one here, every other one, every other one here. And then again, uh, we'll just run a bevel. U, 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 oops, U, U, all through here. And I'm gonna do, let me think. So if this punches all the way through, and this is just gonna kind of be sitting in here. Hmm, you know what we might need to do? Now that I look at the reference, um, it doesn't matter. However you want to do these is fine. Uh, if you want to do Q mesh all polygons, you can pull out at least some thickness and then go ahead and flip those back. Um, oof. Yeah, that's fine. You can flip those back and then you can just alt tap all of these. And then you can just Q mesh poly your ball in this case. Pop these out and then we'll just run, uh, we'll just run a crease, crease level of two, smooth set of three. And then now you can have a little bit of, come on, a little bit of detail built in here. But again, that's really extraneous. Uh, we'll probably end up killing that for the final. Uh, this here is kind of getting in the way a little bit. Uh, we can continue to shrink this down, but again, again, it's just for filler. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna say move, just kind of move this out of the way, or even use a clay brush or standard brush or whatever. Okay. Okay, I'll look at this again. How's everybody doing? Um, what chapters is gonna be, okay. I need you all to help me out with that. Basically, I mean, look at all this. I mean, this is like one millionth of <laughs> what I was, you know, I mean, there's so much stuff that you can do. I mean, you can do shields and flags and, you know, what we're gonna put on his shoulders here. Like it gets, pretty insane right hmm I don't know I don't know so many cool options in here that's a good question though uh, okay do, 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 do. yes feathers from boxes uh, deformer would work um, let's see make some cr corrugated pipe to insert into joints of elbows and knees. Yeah, we can do that. That should be fairly simple. Uh, extrude and Q-mesh. Q-mesh is awesome. Extrude is almost as awesome. So if we go through here and we do uh, just a simple extrude, we hold, hold down Alt here and we could say, okay, let's just extrude polygroup all. We can extrude these out and then we can uh, tap Alt to give us some new polygroups as we pull. So we're extruding, we're extruding. Um, however, if I go here to the middle and I say extrude this one, it's not gonna stick, you know, they're, they're gonna be separate, right? Um, however, if we go through here and we say Q mesh, it's like an extrude, but it's gonna snap 
and so. And that goes both ways. I can go through the other way, boop, and it'll get rid of that geometry and pull it all the way through. Um, so Q mesh is awesome. Extrude is also awesome, uh, but a little it has a little less functionality. Intuos Pro Tablet had to switch to tablet settings a stylus instead of the standard WinTab because my pins seem to be extra sensitive. Um, there are some preferences, yeah. So the preferences, tablet, tablet driver API, WinTab stylus, and then Windows Media Event. Um, also, your tablet properties might have some stuff in here that you may need to play around with. Um, I'm using the same. I'm using an Intuos Pro Medium. It's about 10 years old, so it doesn't have that much pressure sensitivity. But um, actually, I'm getting a new tablet, uh, Zenilabs tablet, sometime this week. So I'll, I'll do a video on that and see how it goes. Never used one before. Uh, Space Marine, it can't be. When you said two years ago, someday you'd make a Space Marine, you did not deceive. I didn't. And in fact, it's not even just a Space Marine. It's an Ultramarine. Whoa. How cool is that? Um... Cool. Uh, Gizmo gear icon acted like it should try to double click it. All the sliders seem to be very sensitive. Um, Gizmo has been giving me, I'll be honest with you. I'm always honest with you. Uh, the gear icon and the Gizmo stuff, like when I go in here to like bend arc and then treat, try to use it, it does make me seem to want to tap this a bunch of times before it lets me in. Um, as far as slider sensitivity goes, if we go through here, what's a good slider example? Um, some sliders, not all of them, like inflate doesn't have this, um, but I want to say... What's one that does? Um, nothing that I really use all that often. Uh, some of the sliders in here, if you just tap on it once, um, you'll see a little hidden, you'll see a little translucent slider on the top. I'm trying to find one that actually has it. Uh, uh, and usually it's on stuff that has a pretty broad range. Um, does the resolution have it? Okay, resolution does have it. So see how, what's the magnifying? Shift M. Okay, so you're going to see right, ooh, look at that. So here's the slider, and then here's a little translucent slider right above it. So you can grab that one, and that'll give you, you can move your brush, your mouse brush a lot, um, and it'll move just a very few numbers. So just tap here, and then just grab that little translucent slider, and it'll give you a lot more fine-tuned. Shift M. Okay. And it'll give you more fine-tuned slider response. Beautiful. Hey, Jonas, <laughs> how's it going? If you guys, uh, thank you. Um, speaking of hard service, hard surface and service, thank you for your hard surface service, Jonas. Uh, go check out Jonas's uh, art station and stuff. He's awesome. One day I'll be like Jonas. Uh, any classes on hard surface modeling, ZBrush, doing stuff like this for newbies out there? Uh, Jonas has some stuff. So Jonas Rosinas, um, let me see. him up. I'm assuming I'm saying that right. Um, oh yeah, Horizon, look at this. Oh my god, you want hard surface? Go check this out. He's got some videos there too. Um, I'm working. I have a hard surface breakdown that could choke a donkey right now. Um, I'm trying to get it organized. I'll put together a something or other. There's so many cool things you can do. Well beyond this. This is like um, box modeling for kindergartners what I'm doing. There's nothing really special fancy going on here, but there's a lot of really cool dynamic concepty stuff you can do in ZBrush aside from like just pure execution from a concept. So I'm getting there. Give me some time. This might be actually a good segue into that. Maybe, I don't know. I'll think about that soon, hopefully. <laughs> exactly. That is my dilemma all the time. I want to get so noodly. Uh, anybody who's on complete hard surface model. Um, Again, there's there's a ton on ArtStation. Uh, Jonas has some great stuff. I'll have some stuff eventually. Give me some time. Uh, yes, Alex. Um, oh, and as far as like super newbie stuff, let me, I'll, I'll, put, I'll toss this back up here. Uh, oops, here. Oops, grab it. Come on, man. Uh, grabbing the wrong thing. Uh, on my ArtStation page, this intro to ZBrush right here, if you want, and it, it'll kind of walk you through the basics, but if you get in here and you go down here to like say Z modeler, this will set you up for like, hey, uh, um, mod, uh, 
Lure. There we go. Um, so here, like videos 32, 33, 34, that'll give you the basics of Z-Modeler stuff and then dynamic subdivisions increasing after that. Um, but as far as like clay, using clay brush and then maybe a little bit of this um, live stream to kind of help you over some issues, here's, uh, actually, Clip is in here. Oh, damn, I need to switch this out for knife brush. Urgh, always something I need to do. Ignore this one, use the knife brush. Um, or booleans. Uh, but yeah, this will get you there. And then, um, actually, I'm trying to think, you know, this this bison we did, this was all knife brush and uh, Z modeler, basically, making of here. This is just thrown into Maya with V-Ray. Um, if we look at this, yeah. So it's the same thing we're doing here, just a little bit more free form, a little more concepty, which is fun. Um, still very controlled. It's not totally nutso, which I would, I'm going to do eventually, but um, you can check that out too. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, I have to work with 200 million points of ZBrush. Do you have any tips on how to speed up ZBrush? Work with several subtools and if possible, several files. Like uh, if I have a, if I can work on an, a weapon separately or maybe the upper body and lower body, split those into separate ZBrush files with separate subtools. Um, you can those file sizes get monster. Uh, stream's still going. Uh, an issue where multi-map export display maps look high contrast in Photoshop instead of the usual washed out appearance. If you're doing 32-bit displacement, it may be converting it. So you can use OpenIO, OpenIO, EXR, to open those and then use the proper adjustments um, for 32 bits. 16 bits, I'm not sure. Uh, unless it's using like a different color profile, like linear versus Adobe some RGB or something like that. Um, oh, and like... Uh, Jan or Yellen says, um, you can also, if, if you're just talking about navigation wise, you can go in here to dynamic solo and then just what you're working on, it'll automatically solo out. So when you're, at least when you're navigating, it'll be fast. Um, and that's that little dynamic button above solo. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what I use for Photoshop. It's called, let me just open up an AO map here and it'll show me renderings. Oh my God, where are they? There they are, geez. AO, EXR, crypto, uh, 3D IO, EXR IO, 3D plugin.com. This is what I use to kind of transfer 32-bit uh, EXRs into Photoshop. Open them appropriately. Cool. Okay, uh, let's keep rocking and rolling. Let's to close this down. Let's get our reference up. Um, are we kind of, oh no, we got, we got more to do with that backpack, don't we? Um, so on here on the side panel, there's a little bit of a thing. Uh, this should just go pretty fast. Give me a second. Uh, duplicate this off. Shift D, go into solo mode. Alt tap, control shift, drag, judge, modify, default, edge, delete, hidden. Um, and this one, let's go ahead and say do an insert single edge loop. And let's try to knock down like here is where about that cut will be. And uh, about here is where that cut will be. Um, so if you hold down Control Shift, you can actually use Select Lasso to grab Edge Rings, Delete Hidden. Um, and on this one, let's go ahead and say Q Mesh. This will be interesting. Let's say Q Mesh, uh, Polygroup All doesn't matter in this case. Um, and then we can do an Inset uh, Polygroup All. Let's just do each poly because it's going to be simple. And then I think I think we can do a Collapse Poly Loop just to get this knock down so we can kind of grab that inset here. And just because I like to do it, we'll say Q mesh. Pull your ball, we'll pull this in. Okay, so that's that little piece there. And then on this, oh, actually, let's hit a W. Um, so if you want to go down the axis of an object, you can use gizmo to do that and just alt drag through. If you want to be really careful, you can go in here to your transpose line, set that here and then hit Y to hop back into gizmo mode. Let's go to unmatch mesh center. And then we can go in here and we can Scale that in just a bit. Okay, that's eh, a little bit more. And then on here, oh boy, there's so many cylinders. Uh huh. Let's go ahead and say, oops, uh, we still have underneath picker, we still have this. We'll do continuous orientation. So here, drag this out and we'll scale it down. And this is one cylinder here. We'll move this. Um, gosh. We'll move it down 
and over, and then control drag out a copy. If you want these to be the same thickness, um, but we want it to be a smaller diameter, just hold down Alt and go against the grain, and that'll keep the same thickness, but just drop the diameter down. And then we can just move this into place. There we go. Control drag. I'm going to leave those all together. Let's just go ahead and say, um, let's drop that crease tolerance down quite a bit. Uh-oh. We need to clean this up. That's weird. Um, hmm. If that ever happens, go here to geometry. Mesh integrity. Let's go ahead and fix our mesh. And that might unsew some edges, but uh, that's kind of weird. Eh, who cares? Okay, so we got that detail. Uh, we do have some detail we need to punch into here. We can use Booleans for it, or we can just sculpt it later. I'm just gonna opt for sculpting. And there's some rivets we can put on here, but I'm not certain how, how big we should go. Oh, we do have a rivet brush though. Alt-E-M rivet. Uh, let's make these all the same size uh, consistently. So we're gonna hold down Control. Oops, start dragging, then hold down Control. That's too big. Here, you can actually, there's even a Z plugin. Now that I think about it, there is like an I, there's a IMM thing you can use to actually, as you're dragging these out, you can type in how many millimeters you want it to be. It's under the Z plugin page under on Pixel Logic. So that might actually come in handy for you real 3D people. Um, yeah, that's fine. Here, here, and then one right down the middle. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make these rivets all one thing. There's actually rivets around this thing too. Oh man, I think they're going to be too small. Okay, I think the backpack's pretty much done-ish. Put those rivets on. And let's get those rivets into their own thing. Split it. And you know what? I'm noticing too, this actually has a harder line. Crease, edge look complete. And it looks like this is slightly off axis. Geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. I'm going to do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. There we go. D for dynamic. Yoink. Alrighty. And then um, the backpack will fudge into place once we get a pose going. Okay, what's next? Um, let's go to um, helmet. Might be a good place to start next because it's going to get wild. So we got the helmet here. Uh, and again, this is gonna be a kind of a mix between, do we want to just sculpt the detail in and call it a day, or do we wanna be nice and do uh, a nice version in case we wanna, I don't know, do a cinematic version later. Um, my gut says just for time, we may just drop in some alphas, but my heart says just do it right and then I don't have to do it again later. Um, but I'm also live streaming, so that tends to Whenever I'm streaming, I tend to go for the quick and dirty over the, let's put on my favorite um, Streets of Rage soundtrack and um, just zone out and do it right. Oh, I don't know. Okay, so also on this thing, we need to figure out this chess piece. Let me load up. Let me scooch over to that reference here. Um, Yeah, I think this chest is going to be complicated too. And it's also got some details that might be more interesting. So we got to put on our big feather with our feathers with our skull. Um, so we'll go ahead and grab some reference, bring in some reference for that. And um, we'll just paint that on and then we'll start doing that. And then also I need to kind of, mm, there's a bunch of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our crease level up to 15. I just want razor sharp. Uh, results out of this thing because we're going to be probably booleaning things off and rebuilding so I want to make sure if I do zero mesh it gives me a nice um, sharp corner okay uh, I have to think again <sighs> okay let's do this hold down shift shoot it to the bottom isolate just the eh, let's show everything because I need references wherever the other things are I'm going to say uh, dynamic apply so it's real geometry um, we'll go ahead and delete lower in case I want to do anything weird with this. And let's go ahead and say texture import. And what are we streaming? Let me see if I can grab a front view that's close. Um, all right, does this have a does this have a thing on it? 
it's not the skull. Hmm. I mean, that could work, but, um, reference, let me see extra large icons. Just something with a front view with the skull on. Oh, there we go. This might work or at least get us close enough. Yeah. Little McFarlane toy here. Okay, so I can use this. Let's go ahead. That's so why I'm in Spotlight now. So basically, texture, import, add that little, that little plus, plus icon. And then we've got oh, Spotlight in here. Spotlight's what I use for most of my reference modeling. In fact, if you want an awesome Z plugin, um, reference ref switcher, use this. It's awesome. Okay, so uh, we have our object here. We can see if these line up pretty damn close. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna isolate just this. So we've got it here, uh, this is real geometry, and hit Control D one more time. Uh, and then I'm gonna say, my standard brush is fine, RGB turned on, or you know what? People get mad when I do that. BPA for our paintbrush. Underneath brush here, go into surface, um, no, samples, turn on spotlight projection. RGB's turned on, so now we can literally did I just literally hop out of that? Okay, screw it. Uh, go in here and we can paint on, number one, where our skull and feathers need to go. Um, but also, let's, let's get this over just a tiny bit. There we go. Nice fat skull. Uh, but also, any details and also that um, that chest separation thing here. So that's essentially where, where my stuff needs to go. Um, let's make the chest piece real quick. It looks like it kind of goes up and actually wraps around the whole character. How about that? Okay, um, let's do it. Let's do this in two parts. I'm gonna duplicate this whole thing off. I'm going to, um, you can go up here to render and you can fade opacity out if you want to. I'm actually gonna go in here to color. Uh, let's drop our RGB intensity down. We have white selected, so color fill object just a couple times. And now we've got a chest piece here. It's gonna go up and around the back until uh, it gets to about Oh, just above here. So about here-ish is where it's going to end up. So, uh, okay, speaking of masking, let's go ahead and just use our mask lasso where we want our chest piece to be. Yoink. And then, uh, oh, perfect. Along the back is just about where I want it. If I want to clean this up, hold down Control and Mask Pin. And now we can go through here and we can say, um, I mean, actually it looks like it's a little bit flatter in the back. I kind of like it following this curvature though, so I'm gonna leave it. Okay, so essentially, let's go into, and actually if you wanna turn off our poly paint, we just turn off that little brush icon. So this is essentially where we want our chest plate to, chest plate to be. Um, and then once it gets into the neck, it gets squirrely. That's fine, we'll deal with that later. So uh, here we have one poly group where that mask is. If I wanna do a cleaner mask, I can go down here to a geometry edge loop mask border. Now to go ahead and just chop this out. Let's go back to select rectangle, geometry modify topology, delete hidden. If you didn't have that, you can go in here and like mask, open border here, and then uh, control tap to invert, and then you know polish by features or whatever. Um, there's also the macro polish polygroup border. You can assign that to a hotkey. It'll just go through and polish polygroup border. X symmetry turned on. Um, zero measure half. We don't need to keep groups or anything, and the smooth groups down to zero. You don't even need to do half. Uh, so while I'm doing this, if I do need to keep some corners sharp, it's going to start kind of rounding my corners out. It's no big deal. It's still doing a great job. I always want to be careful of that because like zero measure does a lot of really good calculations. It's only going to do what you tell it to do. Sometimes it'll get weirdly stumped, but for the most part, if you tell it what to do, it'll do it. So just move Accu to pull out the corners, and now we've got our basic chest shape here. And then we can just say, um, what's the best way to go about this? So if I just do a Q mesh or an extrude, it's just gonna go straight up, but I want it to kind of pull in a little bit. Um, you can manually go through control tap and then, oh, I said control tap. Here we go. So we can just move this poly group in um, and they can go and set this pivot wherever you'd like and you can say eh, scale it up just a bit. Um, you could also have done like an inset and pull out and then maybe do some fancy, stuff. that's fine, that's who cares. Um, and then now we can just run a crease tolerance with dynamic. Let's do a crease PG, there we go. And then if we wanna, oh, actually those should be pretty rounded. In fact, they should actually be more rounded. Huh, 
Let's do this. Insert single edge loop, hold down Alt. Now it'll be more rounded. Um, oh, actually this is what was causing it to not be rounded. Crease edge, so let's undo that. Um, Shift D, D. Well, maybe not, insert single edge loop. Wait a minute, mirror and weld, X symmetry turned on. What is going on here? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, hold on. Mirror in the X, mirror and weld across the X. Shift D, crease, let's do uncrease all, crease PG, crease tolerance up, D for dynamic. Oh, I have it masked, I'm so stupid. Unmask and then you can, it's like, you don't want me to delete it. You literally have it masked, idiot. Okay, so uh, there's our piece here and actually in the back it gets real thick. So let's uh, hold down control, uh, W, control tap this poly group here, shift D, uh, I'm just gonna go in here with a real big old move brush and we're gonna say, just kind of pull this out just a little bit. I guess is where the backpack attaches. So I'm seeing, ah, damn. X symmetry turned on. Let's pull this back. There we go. As it gets thick in the back. Okay, so we got the chest piece here. And you know what, we'll do three and four. Okay, so now that we have that, um, I'm gonna push this back just a tiny bit and then the chest itself uh, I might push back to. Okay, so now that we have this, um, I can I think I can wrap and move to the chest plate. I don't need to go model directly on the chest plate. So we're just gonna go to this one here and let's talk about Skulls are easy enough to just sculpt. You don't need to go and grab the King's Line skull like we did earlier when we did our terrain. Uh, so I think on this one here, I'm just gonna do a sphere. Split mass points. W, Oop. move it into place. Here we go. And then we've got this and control drag. Eh, let's just dynamesh this at a fairly high resolution. So we've got a little skull shape here. Let's go ahead and smooth this back. And um, you know, we could do, we still have this here. If we were to save this position, let's go in here to um, movie timeline show, tap in here in your timeline, then you can turn show off. And then uh, now if I ever move anything around, I can use my arrow keys to snap it back into place. And then literally I can just RGB paint where my skull detail should be. And then I can go in here with my standard brush here. And uh, it's turned down that Z intensity just a bit. Solo mode. And then now we've got our little angry skull here. Um, yeah, that's about right. So little nasal bone and um, little teeth here. Let's turn off RGB for a clay brush here. I said turn off. RGB for a clay brush here. Uh, a little bit of a cheekbone here. It's a little temporalis. Okay, and then move. Move. And let's crank up that Dynamesh resolution here. And you know what? We'll turn off poly paint so we can see what we're doing. There we go. We got a cute little skull. I mean, I'm sorry, a super angry, devastating skull for the Emperor. Uh, we got some here, and then this is like our little lens here. And again, probably doesn't need to be super detailed because, and in fact, what we could do is again, most of what we're doing is just fast and loose, but you can use this as a base for when you want to go up, want to clean up stuff and go do your cinematic. Um, this is a good start, right? It's everything's where you need it to be. You just need to go in and rebuild some stuff or Take, take what you have and uh, just make it a little bit nicer. So, but for now, a little bit of standard brush, a little bit of clay brush. I don't see really any indication of teeth or even if we were to do indications of teeth, 
how much of this is going to show up. Remember what scale we're working at here. So probably pick and choose your battles there. Uh, you know what? And let's also use our trusty clip curve. Control shift tap and then alt down. There we go. Uh, oh, we still have brush radius turned on. It's kind of a cool effect, but not necessary in this case. Okay. Here, here. Close enough. And uh, we can noodle that as much as needed. So now uh, the wings, this is where it's gonna get real fun, right? So what I'm seeing here, if you want to be a little bit looser, let's do Cupid. <laughs> I was doing a Wall Street Bets Cupid thing. Um, you can go through here and you can make the wings uh, like we have on that uh, using nano mesh. I don't think we'll necessarily need to do that uh, for here. What I'm thinking we're going to do is probably, I think we're going to brute force it. I think that's what we're going to do. We'll just make these and then just duplicate them around and scale them as needed and then uh, call it a day. Again, there's a lot on here though. Those may not show up. Um, if I go to my... Actually, they got they got some detail. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we'll keep it at that. Okay. Uh, let me get caught up here. Uh, yep. I'm streaming on Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. Maybe that's kind of hit or miss. Oh, of course, Jonas. Um. You know, I could make a game mesh from this. What we're going to be doing with this is just three D printing a little miniature, thirty-two millimeter miniature, but. Uh, how do you exercise your brain memory? Uh, that's where you guys know. Here's here's the trick: have a YouTube channel uh, where you have to do all the new features, and then when you, when you force yourself to go, hey, I'm going to learn the new stuff. I'm going to read the documentation. I'm going to make a video. I'm going to edit that video. I'm going to publish that video. Um, it sticks it in your brain. I'm going to take notes on it. I'm going to do a beta, and then after you do all that, it sticks in your brain. I that, uh, the good news is. I do that and um, that then keeps me honest. The bad news is I have to do that for almost everything. If I actually want to remember something, I got to take notes. Uh, I got to do a video helps. You know, if I teach somebody something, it helps me too. So if I really want to know something, um, you're still running on Threadripper 3000 series, the new 5000, just the old one. Isn't that terrible? Let me, um, let me see if I can upgrade. <laughs> I love, I've had every generation of Threadripper that's ever existed, uh, except for the newest one. So maybe, maybe someday. Cool. Uh, Space Marine. Excellent. Well, man, follow along. We'll have fun together. Uh, when you change gizmo focal shift and then pre-press reset, uh, all ZBrush crashes. Gizmo focal shift. Really? Put in a ticket for that one. That sounds scary. Uh, any idea why under the brush menu tablet size curve setting is not zero to one in default? I have setting, um, brush menu tablet size setting. So under the brush menu, there's tablet pressure and then the size setting isn't set to zero one. You know what? I guess maybe because any global settings might be different. That's going to be under preferences tablet. I think mm, that might not be right. It might be looking somewhere else. Uh, but yeah, depending on what brush you have selected, um, it's going to have different, you know, H polish as all the way up. Um, but standard brush by default is, it doesn't go all the way to zero. I really honestly don't know. Um, that's weird. And I, I'll honestly, I use vanilla. I turn off everything on my tablet. I just use pressure sensitivity and whatever the vanilla defaults are. Um, so I don't really mess with that too much. So I don't have a really great answer. Get the new one for sure. Seems like a mad beast. Yes. Okay. Well, you've convinced me. Um, I need to make some money. <laughs> and then I'll get it. Okay. So uh, we have this here. Okay. Let's start. Um, you know, whenever I'm, whenever I'm afraid to tackle something, I get real chatty. So um, let's just go. Let's just get this thing going. Now, here's the question. Do I want to model this? to the curvature of this mesh or do I want to model it flat and bend it into place later? Which one's going to be easier? I'm thinking flat might actually behoove us. 
just because when we're duplicating stuff around, I don't want to have to deal with curvature at the same time. I want to deal with just the shape and then I can curve it into place. So we've got it painted on here. We know where it needs to end up, but I'm going to go in here to, and actually it goes on the chest, but we're going to go in here to uh, quick save. Whenever I hop out of my primary sub tool, I always do a quick save just in case you never know. Uh, let's go in here to plain 3D, F to frame. Actually, I need to have one more window open. I forgot. My poor wife is on her own. No, oh, she's fine. Okay, so we've got polyframe on here. We're gonna say make polymesh 3D, hit control D till we're up to, I don't know, a million or so. We'll do shift Z here. I'm gonna go ahead and paint uh, across X symmetry. Actually, I'm gonna go down in my resolution here. Um, I'm gonna say Control W. I still I just want to know where the midline is basically. Um, so when I position this, I know where to grab it. Uh, okay. So uh, lines off standard brush RGB here RGB intensity up to 100. So this is gonna give me the details I want. We're just gonna do it on a flat plane to start with. I think that'll be the best bet. Oh, by the way, if you ever need to see see how it goes to pure black and it goes to transparent in ZBrush, go in here to the intensity tab and crank that to the right a little bit. And that'll turn your pure blacks into very dark grays. So that won't happen, but we're fine. Um, RGB intensity down a bit, color fill object, just to knock this back. You can use again, render fade opacity if you want to, but I'm fine. So now um, we could just use topology brush for that top one. So BTO, let's go down here and say delete lower so we can mess with this geo. So we're gonna go grab here and then just across and then over, and then over, and then <laughs> if, you, if you've ever listened to Game of Thrones audiobooks, uh, I think it's Doltrees, he played Mozart's dad in Amadeus. Uh, whenever he does Cal Drogo's voice, <laughs> it kind of sounds like that. Uh, okay, anyway. Uh, tap off here. That'll give us a thickness. We'll go ahead and say split mass points. And that's the beginning of that uh, shape here. Now, when we hit, you know, we'll do a go ahead and do a crease PG. We'll hit D for dynamic. We do want this soft curve here. Um, but we, and again, I'm working flat. So what we could do also while we're doing our moving around stuff on things with thickness, let's go in here to depth. Uh, turn on infinite depth in the Z. That way, uh, that's turned on automatically. If you go in here to point uh, Z modeler, if we're just moving points, brush radius, you can do, oh, it's not on by default, uh, infinite Z or infinite depth is turned on, but you can also turn it on with the move brush here with infinite depth. Anyway, uh, here, up, and then uh, shift D, and we're going to say, uh, okay, these corners need to be creased, I think. So this one's round, but this one here, actually we'll do this, crease, tolerance at 45, hit D, and then we just uncrease this one. That'll be a little bit faster and those will be creased for us. So that's the first start. And then if we wanna, you know, infinite depths turned on, so we can just go through here and move this around. Looks about right, correct mundo. Okay, next, um, if we want to, we can turn on transparency with ghosts. On this, no, let's just tie in this one. We've got that one out. So now, man, it's just, we'll stick with what we like. So BTO is fine, that's fast enough, right? So we'll go through here. Uh, and these are just layered. They're, they don't have a whole lot of crazy stuff going on. They're pretty standard. So we're just gonna go through here. We'll do one more through here. And I need to, to give it some nuance. I'm gonna go through and add this geo. Uh, again, tap off. That's gonna give us whatever thickness is there. It's also gonna put it right down the middle. I can change that thickness on the fly later, I think. Um, I hope, yeah, I can. Uh, so we'll go ahead and turn that off here. Uh, okay, so we got one more here and I've got this all lined up. So now I think we can just control drag off here. And again, we have move infinite depth turned on. Uh, let me think actually, before I do that, is there anything fancy I need to do? Do I need to go ahead and set these up for success? I think that is the probably the best way to go. Okay, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go here to the top and I'm gonna make sure that this is just kind of seated on the plane-ish. 
And then if I hit D on this one, we can just say, just run a crease tolerance here. Uh, that's where it got, got, got me where I want the creases to go. Actually, this top one probably shouldn't be creased. So that's that one's good to go. However, if I was to go in here and say, okay, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, that's not bad. If you wanted to get crazier, you could go in here and like inset and bevel and do all that stuff. I honestly, I think this is fine. You know, we could even, if we're going to smooth this later, three and four might be fine for that. Heck, we'll take it. Um, so now it's just a matter of going through here and moving and rotating. Infinite depth moving. Um, I don't think in this case while we're working, I'm going to turn topological off just because it's going to get in the way. And then on this one here, I'm going to go ahead and increase this one back. Okay, I'm going to try to make this go fast. Uh, okay, so again, move infinite depth here. And I'm trying to think if there might have been a more, I mean, there's probably a, like a funner kind of technique -y solution, but I think I'm going to rely on brute force. Um, yeah. Hoping I, I'm not going to regret this later and be like, it actually looks like trash. Don't do it that way. Because uh, when that happens, and if you want to, while you're working, you know, you can always do um, an auto groups and then geometry modified topology, mirror and weld, and then W control tap the last one here. Um, if you'd like. So go through here. And I wish if we turn on transparency with ghost off, is there a setting under draw that allows me to? Front opacity, back opacity. Turn my back opacity down so I can actually see through a little bit better. My reference here. Okay, you're gonna watch me go blind live. Um, oh, and it actually, okay. Actually, as we start getting down here, we start getting a little bit more of a, so it, they all kind of rise to a pointed shape like so, however, once we get to about this one, or maybe the one just after, they start coming to a point right here. So let's control drag this down. We'll scale it. And I want to make sure we're flat. Uh, and also turn on LSIM. And then now what we have to do is right about in the middle. We're going to have to go in here and say insert single edge loop, put one down the middle. Um, if we turn on move vacuum, make sure you turn on infinite depth for that brush as well if you want to pull out the points. And then on this one, oops, we're going to say crease edge. Oh, crease edge. There we go. So again, as, and we can clean up these shapes in a bit. In fact, we can even use polish by features and that'll get rid of some of that wobbliness. I want to see that in action. If we just go through here now, polish by features, uh, any creases or poly groups you have, that we'll go ahead and um, respect those so it'll smooth out your shapes. And if you want to go nuts, it's the open circle. Um, so if you really want to polish them, you can, but we don't want to go too crazy, right? Okay, so, oh God. Okay, this is when everybody leaves the channel. <laughs> Hope you had fun. Um, we're going to be moving feathers for the next 15 minutes. So control drag this out. And I guess while I'm doing this, let me think out loud, since I don't have any music, how I could be doing this better. So you could go through and you can mask uh, and then just zero mesh, but that can get messy, especially with this kind of complex shapes. Um, you can use nano mesh, but then you'd have to set it up and rotate and I don't know that it would be You'd have to go in and do some manual cleanup. It might be faster at placing though if you get tired of doing this Using nano mesh might be worthwhile. Actually while we're doing this one As we're getting smaller, let's go ahead and simplify some of these insert single edge, but we don't need all this geometry, right? In fact, we need very little Let's do shift D D yeah, in fact, we could probably clean up a lot of these with fewer geometry. And again, we have move infinite depth turned on. So now we're getting down here. These ones aren't necessarily thinner, but they are. And in fact, we don't even have to have thickness turned on. We're doing infinite depth, but we could just be doing flat planes and extruding those at the end. Just keeping that in mind. Yeah, these are all about the same thickness. They're just 
shorter. In fact, this one seems to be a little thicker. All right, and last one. And let's go out of solo mode here. Okay. Um, if we need to change any of these, we, it's not a big deal. You just, um, if you want to flatten those all, just I'm going to Z scale the tops and bottoms to the same level. Make them all consistent. And then uh, if we need to break those up, we can. Uh, let's do a quick auto grips. The judge modified topology mirror and weld. LSIM turned off just in case. And um, at this point, if you did want to do infinite depth with topological turned on, because we're not masking, you can go through here and again, just kind of, you know, clean these things up, uh, move things out of the way, get things a little bit more lined up um, nicely. Uh, but we can also use that big, that big feather piece we have uh, to do that. Okay, so there's, <laughs> there's part one. And if I quit whining about it, uh, I'd probably be, I'd probably be almost done. Oops, hold on just a second. I heard something ping off. Let me catch up on the chat while I'm fixing that. Come on, Canon. Cool, cool, cool. Um, brush mini tablets. Cool. Uh, Armando. Do you use blue light lens to protect your eyes from constant computer screen viewing? You know, there's been studies that, and yeah, these are bad looking. I have three different <laughs> pairs and the <laughs> I got these old creepy, I don't know why I, you know, I got these versions because um, it, it, I have plastic ones that are nicer looking, but whenever they fall, they tend to psh, just explode. Um, and so the lenses pop out, but these ones, are uh they're kind of like 70 serial killer they're metal frames and they have the, the the blue light here let me do this let's get the full effect of my 70s serial killer um oops wrong window wow there we go so i do have a version like this that does have the blue light blocking i think it helps a little bit it makes my eyes a little less watery um after doing this for a 12 hours or straight you know um but uh, I don't wear them to my live stream, live stream because I don't want people to think I'm a serial killer from the 70s. Okay, so uh, we got this. Uh, okay, now let's see if we can do this a little bit faster. So I'm gonna hit W, I'm gonna control drag out a copy, and maybe we can just use this as a start. Um, can I scale these along several axes at once and keep maintain the, the same thickness? Because uh, here's the deal. These are gonna be back behind here. So I'm gonna control tap, uh, alt tap and then just move these forward and then invert that and see if we can't just kind of twist at least get a good start you know these are close enough you know uh, it provides a good start so i'm going to go ahead and say um we can even do a hide point control shift drag and if you have a clip curve you can just control tap uh, just control to switch to select rectangle temporarily we can say split hidden and then now we can turn off our top and then again, we'll go into transparency mode and we have topological turned on, uh, infinite depth turned on. So let's just go through it real quickly and just put these things into place. And we've already got them all duplicated out so it should go a little bit faster. Thank you very much. Um, so we're gonna go here and it looks like these are a little bit rounder, at least on this model. I mean, God, there's any number of references you can get for these, you know, depending on if you're looking at the game, the tabletop models or the cinematics or McFarlane toys, you know, they've all got their own flavor. So here, so we'll, we'll get these into place and then we'll do a, just a one real quick pass to make sure they're where they, they're the roundness where they should be. I'm basically just getting volumes into place now. And again, we can run a polish by features. A feature is a polygroup border and or a crease. Um, and we have both. So we can easily go in and smooth and still retain our volumes, uh, which is nice. So we can be kind of sloppy, which is my middle name. 
Michael Sloppy Pavlich, and uh, and we could still get something reasonably decent. Uh, okay, for these ones, let's scale these all out. So Control Shift, I just want to grab these ones real quick. So just grab a little piece, Control Shift A, mask and invert, uh, move along this axis here. Let's turn on L Sim, and uh, yeah, and then we'll just stretch a little faster, and then uh, yeah, we'll go back. So instead of duplicating out and then scaling, although we could do this, we can control tap any of these and then um, <laughs> I say that and then I don't get it. Uh, and then you can just manually scale. And since they're all one polygroup, you can also just use move by polygroup, but we have topological turned on, so I think that'll work fine. Um, control tap, oh, come on, control tap, rotate, move, maybe scale out. And this is the kind of thing too where if I'm doing a video editing, I can edit on the fly. I can't edit myself uh, into doing this faster, unfortunately. Move, maybe scale out a little bit more, maybe fatten up just a tad. Okay, what's going on here? Um, okay, this one does get looks like I misjudged some of this reading what we were, that we were doing, but this one down here does get quite a bit fatter through here, and it goes to a point. Yes, it does. And it looks like the point kind of drops off, which we can do in post. W control, t and by post, I mean once we're done with this, we can go through and drop all the points if we need to. So here, here, and here. And oh boy, we finally finished the feathers. On the sizzle video, this will be two seconds. <laughs> I'll go and everybody will be like, whoa, that's so fast. And I'll be like, <laughs> No, it's not. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. The illusion of speed. Okay, so we've got those into place ish. We can fine tune as much as we'd like. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to make sure we have all our pieces here. And then we can wrap. We can wrap this. And if I want to make sure I have a good base, what I might could do, and this goes underneath. Yep. So I'm going to hold down control. Uh, let's go in here to mask lasso. Control drag over these ends here. Control tap to invert that. Uh, control drag out a, um, what's it called? An edge ring, edge loop. I don't know, 3D terms. And then now uh, we can just move these back so they are just sitting underneath here. And let's turn off topological so I can literally just get these things as a nice, solid base underneath everything. And our skull's gonna cover that up. There we go. That's all I'm looking for. And then here, these need to be plugged up in. In fact, let's go ahead and mask, yoink. And then on the top of everything is this one here. And we'll say Q-mesh this out. Now thicknesses, I'm gonna, you know, as long as they're all relative, uh, relatively the thickness they should be, uh, I can uniformly uh, scale these all at once and they should be all right. Uh, and then the skull is back on the chest. Okay, now that point drop, mm, no, they don't really. And in fact, now that I'm looking at them, they rotate slightly or they don't, they don't necessarily have to rotate slightly, but what we can do is make this go a little bit faster. I can try and go through here and say, let's do a transpose edge loop partial. I'm just going to click on this line here. Oops. Um, edge loop partial, and I can just go in here and just pull out just a little bit here. Uh, and that, that partial is only going to go corner to corner. So that way I can quickly 
quickly being relative, I can kind of quickly go through here and just set these to kind of overlap, have an overlapping look, I should say. So that way I don't have to go in and do any crazy rotating or anything. The only thing I need to be careful of is that midline, but you know what, I can simplify these even more. And in fact, another thing I need to be careful of is, eh, it seems to be stopping where I want it to, um, that it overlaps where I want it. And this is another thing too, when you talk about scale, is maybe you wanna over crank this overlap, you know? But even when you get it on the model, you should be able to do the same thing. Let's do Shift D so I can see where the actual edges are. There we go. One. One. And I think on this one by default, you can just tap off and it'll reset but then it's gonna add, does it add this mask? If not, that's kinda, yeah, okay. I guess it does unmask, that's nice. So that goes pretty fast. Um, so now we have overlaps there. And then if we wanna simplify, do we wanna simplify this? There's another thing we can do is, um, we can go through here and we can just say collapse edge. And we, we wanna keep that end uncollapse so that we get the point, but these ones we want to be flat, so we can just literally um, collapse that edge, and that'll simplify that geo quite a bit. Eh, depends on how much money work you want to put into that. But let's go back here into topological, and we'll get this a little bit nicer. Now before I put this on, I do want to make sure it's, it is nice. Um, let's do a real quick, like we were talking about earlier, polish by features, closed circle. That's deformation polish by features. And we just tap that a couple times just to kind of smooth those lines out based on our creasing. And then we can go back in here and move these things back around. Again, uh, there might have been a more elegant solution for that. But whenever I get sweaty on a live stream, I tend to brute force. Or what I'll do if I'm going to do a video is I'll brute force it. And then if I come up with a better way to do it after I'm all done, then I'll re-record it doing the right way. And everybody will be like, that Michael Pavlovich, he's always got the right answer. And I'll be like, that's right. Don't you ever forget it. But little do you know, I don't know anything. Okay. Um... I actually like the one with the midline better. Um, let's see if I can fix this. Let's, let's isolate this one here. Oh, let me think. Um, I can fix it. Uh, let's turn off infinite depth temporarily. Uh, that's under our brush depth menu. Well, they simplified this one, but it kind of gave us a weird artifact. Um, oh, but I guess it's fine. Okay, so those are better. And I think, honestly, close enough for government work. Let's go back to this bottom set here. Alt-Tap, if it'll let me. Let's turn off polypane, that's why. Okay. Um, kind of the same deal for this one. Hold on just a second. Here, let me put this down here so I can see. Okay, um, so these are all sharp, sharp. This one starts to actually bend on the third one. Again, I don't know why I'm, who cares, right? But I don't know, probably somebody does. So infinite depth is turned back on for this one. And then we're gonna go through here and we're gonna say crease. And then these we can kind of even this geometry out. We still have move topological turned on, I believe. Yeah, we'd have to. Okay. So, same old tricks. I'm just evening this geometry out because it's kind of all over the place. Infinite depth on. And then one more, oh boy. And again, if these are just straight lines, uh, you can go through here and actually let's do this. Let's do our whole um, polish by features closed circle. Smooth those out just a bit. Make me look 
somewhat competent. And we can go ahead and get rid of this one. Not get rid of it, but hide it. And this is just a base that we're not really gonna see, but I like having it there. So one more time, transpose, edge loop partial, click on that edge, click on that edge, go to the side, move it out. And then, okay, let's do this right. So we got move transpose. Um, so we can go through here and click on this edge and then move it out. And then we just tap. We don't even have to like hit W or anything. And then just go and click that next edge, move it out, and then just tap, move it out, tap off, tap again. This goes a little bit faster. Built-in functionality. Thank you, Ofair. I think he was the one who put that in by default. If I remember my beta correctly here, tap here, out, and that is a preference. I think if you go to, if you don't like that functionality, there is a preference under, I don't know, maybe preferences gizmo, I think might, there's a button you can turn that off if you don't like it. Works out in this case. And then this bottom one here, it's fine. Now, if you want to get really intense, you could, uh, like I was saying, you could get smaller. So let's turn off infinite depth here. So if you want to go through here and be like, okay, on these edges, actually, we can see if we can do this, transpose partial, and we'll set our pivot here. You can just go through really, just real quick, and just, uh, oh man, it inherits though. Let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna alt tap here so that it's, let me see if I can try something else. I'll tap here so that it's generally flat. And then if I go through here and I say mask, edge loop partial, invert, and then I can keep my axis this way. And then I can just, uh, oh, but I have to unmask. I guess that's not terrible. Ah, oh, get out of my way, plane. Okay, move, so I can keep my move axis, tap off, mask, unmask, keep my move axis, tap off, mask, unmask. I guess I gotta remember to hold down Alt. <laughs> mask, unmask. Okay, yeah, this is kind of a pain, but um, it's probably easier just to go through here with your move brush and just say, let's shrink Oh, infinite depth is off, yes. Topological being on sometimes hampers your flow. So we're just pulling these ends down just a bit, just because they need to taper to a thinner, something like that. Infinite depth back on. Man, sorry, this is so boring. Back on here. Same deal for these. Topological off, infinite depth off. Devil's in the details, man. And again, it makes sense, you know, it's not just an extruded shape, a feather tapers towards the tip in depth I'd assume as well as or at least the look of it I don't know if in reality it does but for a piece of stylized art on armor it might sell it a little better you know just a little bit of subtlety okay and then this one kind of tapers to a point but uh, I'm mostly doing it just so it's not so drastically <laughs> thicker across the board. So we'll give it a little bit of nuance here. And not exact. I'm not sending my architecture plans to NASA for this, so I can fudge it. I can just use my move brush, call it a day. Okay. Woo, um, is that about it?
let's see. Let's make sure this holds up. Make sure this holds up. Anything major you want to change? And again, we can continue editing this after the fact. It's not like we have to do it here. I'm just making sure everything's about where it should be. Everything's interlocking. Um, let's go in here to move topological off. I want to make sure that these kind of line up where they're supposed to. These points need to go into the armpits of the next ones until we get down here. And then that's not quite really the case. And then these just straight up overlap, so we're in good shape. Okay, and then this one here, turn off. Let's move this out just a bit. Okay, nice clean sweep. Um, yeah, that should be pulled back in there. These go down. Um, let's do a quick, another quick polish by features. Just tap once. You know what? Hold on. I don't know why. Thought this was uncreased originally. Whew, okay. And fortunate, fortunately, this is the most intense piece of detail I think we're doing on here. Uh, ooh, until we get to the shoulder pad. Eh, we'll see what we're doing for the shoulder pad. Um, how much detail do we want to put on there? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this is a little intense. Anything that looks like it's bruising unnecessarily we can and we can even take these we can push them down just a bit uh, this one will say let's try a crease level of three smooth it above four and uh, two and three nice soft fall off and eh, three and four okay I think we've got some sort of feathers on here while we're working on this one, we may as well, if we want to use this in another project, it might behoove us to go in here and say, we'll call this um, chest wings. We'll save this off as a Z tool, just in case we want to reapply this later. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and apply this to our geometry. Um, let's do, <laughs> we could do merge invisible. And then on this merged one, we could even make it into its own brush. Let's do a quick save. Whenever I'm out of my usual sub tool, I'm doing brushes. I don't know, makes me feel better. New, so now we can insert this wherever we want. We got a whole brush for detailing up our own space marines. But back to our thing here. Now, here's the trick. Uh, if we put this on, you can see how it kind of overlaps the chest a little bit. If we put this on the chest geometry, it might catch those edges and pull through. Uh, but what we can try to do is just have this geometry showing and then if I apply this geo, let's see if this works, over here with, um, again, we made our insert mesh brush. You can give it a shot. You can go in here to modifiers, projection strength. So as you drag this out, it'll kind of snap to the underlying surface. You're going to see if you go over an edge, it's going to want to snap to an edge and go a little bit nuts. But as long as you have a nice clean surface, it will wrap itself uh, to that geo. I think that worked pretty good. Let's go a little higher. Pretty close. I think that could work. If that doesn't work, um, we'll go ahead and say split mass points and we'll hide this. Another thing you do is don't use, am I crazy? Oh, switch brushes. Don't use projection strength. Drag it on flat. And then you can use, um, let's go in here to split mass points. You can use any number of things. You can go in your gizmo. Um, you can say maybe trying to try a bend arc and you can see if that'll match the underlying surface. You can try Matchmaker Brush, BMM. Um, that's just a click and drag that will actually try to match. It'll actually pick up your RGB information too. That's kind of neat. Um, it'll try and match your geometry uh, based on your camera angle. So if you put it right above here and just click and drag, um, it'll try and match the curvature of the underlying mesh. May or may not work that well. Uh, or you can literally just go in here and uh, you know, try a, a, a lattice deformer or whatever your program calls them. And you can go through here and you can say, um, have X symmetry mirrored. So then you can go through here and hold on control alt. And then as you move this one back and this one forward, you can go through and move these points, oops, move these points around to kind of get that curvature to match your underlying chest piece. Okay, okay. 
Okay. So we got this. This is our placeholder, right? Do we need this anymore? I don't think so. Deleted. Turn everything back on. Polypaint off. Here. And uh, wait. Did I miss some. Hmm. I accidentally. I uh, didn't duplicate off my original. No problem. Let me go in here to load tool. Alt tap, say, delete other. So now we have our chess piece back and now we can go <gasps> insert. Thank God for saving iteratively. And then now uh, we've got our wings so our wings kind of, okay, they follow the neck perfectly. So we're gonna have to fudge that a bit. So here, big old brush, lift and separate. There we go. Move. This pulls up to like the corner. Oh boy, it goes way up there, doesn't it? Eek. Let's mash this around. And again, we're moving around very few points, so we can always move around very few points to get a nice smooth result. Um, so I'm not too worried about losing our smoothness or anything. Uh, uh, and then how far over does it go? Yeah, it kind of sticks off the mesh here. Kind of just kisses the bottom of the chest plate here. Something like this. Yeah, it's pretty close. And again, finagle this, fine tune this as much as you'd like. Um, I think it's close enough. So if I hit D for dynamic, uh, increase the level of three, smooth it to four maybe, strike two. You can even do an inflate. You can go through here and thicken these up as much as you want. Let's take this skull piece and we'll put it out front here a little bit. And let's, this skull's looking kind of sad. Let's, Ooh. Again, these are just placeholders, so feel free to mess with this one as much as you want. Um, is that about the right size, shape? Okay, whew, um, got over that hurdle. Let me catch up here. Uh, what does infinite depth actually do? I always turn it off whenever I could, but never know its function. Um, <laughs> hey, Kiza, thank you, Sway. Um, infinite depth is awesome in that, uh, let's do a quick save. So basically, if I have a shoulder pad that goes straight back and I want to, uh, move, you know, it's, it's moving within a brush radius by default. See how that one's left alone. If you want to move both sides, you can go in here to infinite depth and then whatever direction, X, Y, or Z. In this case, Z, we're Z forward and back. So now when I move this one, it goes all the way back. Infinite depth. So very useful. We did it on our SpongeBob head where we went through and did his undulating waves down his little square body. Um, infinite depth helped out a lot there. Useful. Whew, man want to breathe easy after that so we got our backpack here we got our chest piece uh we got some more detail it's mostly just alpha drag I mean, honestly i'm gonna do alpha dragging just let's just do that i have a feeling that's gonna get us as far as we need to with our details same thing on the helmet here let me see if anything in our helmet that's nutso that needs to be nicely modeled. I'm looking for any easy wins as far as like, okay, we do actually have one thing we need to do. Um, so on this chess piece here, and actually we need to bring this whole thing down. Oh, okay. Uh, let's do this. So I'm going to bring this, oop, not the, oh, I always need to do it on the chess piece too. Bam. So we have a nice chess piece. However, I need to go to the top here. Shift D. Okay, let's do D. Dynamic, apply, delete lower. I'm gonna to go to the top, 
I'm going to say insert a cylinder 32 um, solo mode here. I'm going to say split mass points. We're going to hold down shift and shoot these both to the bottom. Because I need to poke a hole in here and I'm hoping I don't have to rebuild everything. Uh, it's not a huge deal if I do. It's just, you know, I'm lazy. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to say crease dynamic. Um, let's crease level 15 on both these. Crank it up. Oh, I should have done that on this one. Um, um, um. Wait. Really? Wait a minute. Everything on. Hide. Why did I do that? I can really do stupid things sometimes. I mean, it's not a huge deal. I can go down here and hit reconstruct until I get back to my original, um, which I'm going to do. Uh, but basically, dynamic, I'm going to do, again, crank this up. And if, yeah, okay, fine, if it's fine. Okay, so very sharp edges. And then this thing's going to be a Boolean mesh. So we're going to say subtractive, turn on live Boolean, hit W. And we're going to say punch this on through. W, hold down Alt. Uh, let's do X symmetry off on mesh mesh center. So now we've got, okay, we got this thing punching through a hole in our, uh, our sh thing. And then we can hold down Alt to pull along that surface normal. I'm just going to punch it so it just goes, gives me a little bit of breathing room maybe around the corners. And then again, just these two showing goes, you know what, let's punch it all the way through. Come on, man. The middle. Okay, subtractive, Boolean, off. This is the resulting mesh. And I'm going to duplicate this off because I'm going to need to use it in two different places. So I want to see all the way inside. And on this one too, I want to make sure we're all the way creased hard as heck. Um, not smooth subdiv of 7. Crease level of 15. There we go. Super sharp. Nice polygroups wherever I want my stuff. And in fact, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and no, I'm going to simplify this one. So if I do shift D, go into solo mode, these two, I'm going to make the same polygroup. Just because I don't want to confuse the measure any more than I have to. Okay, so this is the volume I'm looking for. We've got these two showing. This is the result I'm going to get when I pull my live Boolean. Looks good. Um, Boolean mesh dynamic subdivision. Insert that resulting mesh. Goes auto selects it for me. Um, I don't need, I can always recap these manually. So let's give it something less to think about. So delete hidden. X symmetry turned on. That should be fine. X symmetry turned on. Zero mesh. Half depth size down to zero. Keep group smooth groups down. Let's just rebuild this real quick. Again, with the head built, uh, cut out. Okay, that worked perfect. And let's go back in here and we'll just cap these. Close convex hole. Tap. Isolate. Control W. Judge modify to volume mirror and well across the X. Yeah, okay. So that one's good. I don't need this mesh anymore. So we'll, yeah, any, both of these working meshes we don't need. So delete, and I duplicated this cylinder off so I can just delete that too. D for dynamic, crease PG, crease level three, smooth so level four is fine. And then back in here, we're gonna do the chest exact same way. So this is down below, subtractive, slices through. We got our poly groups. I think I'm good. Boolean. Dynamic subdivision. Oof. I must have subdivided, smooth subdivided those one too many times. Um, append here. Solo. Yikes. Fair enough. Next symmetry turned on. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, zero metric, keep group smooth groups down to zero, depth size down to zero, target polygon count of five is fine. Um, for some reason, I think I maybe I left it on like smooth subdiv of seven, which gave me a ton of points. Okay. Um, uh, StarCraft 2 character, what's the concept? The concept, oh, let's take a look at that while we're 
going through here. So this is our ultramarine. Um, let's see if I remember how to use this alt. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm in zebra. There we go. Okay. Alt middle mouse. Okay. Uh, yeah. So just various reference from cinema. Mostly what I'm pulling from is cinematics. Although really, what we're making is something to scale. So we're actually going to have to beef up our deets, as they say. Uh, actually, I don't think they say that, but I say it. There we go. So now uh, there's the target polygon kind of five, five of, uh, and we didn't have symmetry turned on, so that doesn't help. Okay. Um, I think this will actually be fine here. So we'll say crease PG, crease level of two, lucidive of three, and now we've got a hole through the head. So we'll turn both these back on. Now we can see down in here, and I can add a neck. He's got a little space for his head to move. Um, this is where his undersuit is, so I think we're okay. Okay, um, I guess we'll just work from the top down. Uh, in fact, actually, if we want to have nicer geometry for this, that's not necessary, but uh, we can have X symmetry turned on. I'm gonna control tap this point in history. Uh, we can say Ziri mesh, uh, target polygon count of like one and a half uh, groups of Ziri mesh it. That'll give us new geometry, we can say half. And then while I'm doing this, there's a subtool project, there's a project history. So we control tap that point in history. So now, as long as we keep zero meshing, and then we can say project history again, hit control D, project history, control D, project history, get all our details back, have nicer geometry. And then if we want to get rid of that history, control tap your latest history twice. And now you have a brand new mesh. Um, let's turn my Boolean off. There we go. And then our working files here, we don't need any more. So this original chest, we don't need. And then this one, we don't need. Now, while I was doing that, I realized that we actually needed a strap along here. So I'm gonna hide our arm pieces, get these out of the way real quick. So right along, oop, man, it doesn't matter. Right along in here, there's a, it's not really an ammo belt, oh, actually, Shifty. These should be a point. So let's go through here and I'm going to say this comes down in a clean sweep. We're going to say crease this edge and crease this edge. And we're going to move Accu infinite depth off these two, the points that they should be. Again, playing it fast and loose. If you ever need to, you can go in here and do just do a tap on that polish by features closed circle. It'll clean that up for you. And then D for dynamic. So that's where it should be. Sorry, I'm getting particular in here. You know what? We can even hop inside, do a uh, Q mesh polygroup ball. Just hold down shift to pull it in a little bit further. Uh, do another little cleanup. Boop. D. So right through here, this kind of comes down and then right along here about halfway through, this actually gets sliced through. And again, we're eventually just going to cut in panel lines. I'm not overly concerned about the, the low res detail part, but this part is going to be something that has to be separate. So uh, let's just hop in here to, let's do shift D. Yeah, that's fine. BTO for topology brush. I'm just following along this, oops, this path here. So it goes here to about the midway point, here to about the midway point, and then about here. There we go. Tap, split mass points, crease dynamic, and then there's this piece. Now, there's a little nuance to this piece, and depending on what you're looking at, if you're looking at the cinematic, there's a lot of detail to this piece here, so I may keep a version of this just for cinematic purposes if we ever end up making one of those. But for the 3D printed stuff, let me show you what I'm looking at here. Uh, can't really see it on these guys. Um, but essentially, oh boy. Like on the, I can't really see it in here either. If we're going to be, let's go down here, my chest reference. Where's my chest only? Z 
see this right here it's got like little notches built in basically what i'm seeing on the smaller models is just kind of ridges and then it kind of terminates into a, a housing so we'll go ahead and do that so uh this should be we'll keep it simple so i'm going to duplicate this off i'm going to do shift d we're going to take a look at this the housing i'm just going to have let's do q mesh polygroup all i'm going to push oop, not polygroup all we're going to q mesh a single poly just pull that back um, and then now we can just grab these ones here delete hidden so this can be our housing and then we can go through here we'll say a q mesh a single poly and we'll hold down shift as we pull along one polygon and another polygon and another polygon i mean i guess you could go in and scale but i'm just pushing along that surface normal and then d for dynamic now on this one what we could do instead of a smooth subdiv we could do a q grid chamfer on coverage down and that can just be again our housing and then as far as these ridges go um let's do this let's do shift d increase level all the way up let's do dynamic let's do control d once and then delete lower yeah i think that'll work so let's go through here and i'm going to say insert this bz model brush bzm insert q mesh let's get rid of this middle one uh q mesh polygroup ball just hold down shift as you push along that surface normal there and then i'm trying to see what kind of detail do you want to put in is it like overlapping okay we can try that so let's do this um let's say bevel edge loop complete and we're just going to give it a little bit of depth here and then we're just going to work our way back up and then um let's make our lives let's go a little bit faster so i'm going to isolate all of these here Control w make them all in poly group so we can go through here and say q mesh poly group all i'm going to pull these out and then i'm going to go back in and i'm going to say collapse poly loop and we're just going to go back in and collapse these twice so collapse once and up once so that way it kind of gives that kind of overlap kind of look that i'm kind of seeing we'll see how it looks can only try all right um is that even seen that goes in the housing right yeah okay let's do a crease all dynamic to three and eh, three four is pretty low res something like that and then now we can just we can just fudge this nothing wrong with that get it to fit and then this one oops redo that one undo that okay alt tap d for dynamic alt tap goes into the housing anything fancy there um maybe this looks like it should be maybe a little more uniform. Infinite depth off. <laughs> I don't know why I get mad. It's only doing what doing what I tell it to do. I only have myself to blame. Okay. All right. We got that piece. Both sides. All right. But yeah, we're supposed to do some helmet stuff too. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see. Space Marine, yeah, Warhammer 4K, yep. Cool. Blizzards, Games Workshop, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> cool. Alrighty. Uh, okay, let's. This is something I've been avoiding too, is the helmet. Because this is where I'm going to start getting, I think, a little bit more fast and loose with my details. Um, again, let's grab our reference here and make sure. Because my, my, my heart tells me I need to do it right. My gut tells me I need to just go in and start dynameshing and getting this guy posed out. What time is it? Yeah, it's only 11. Let's just stream till like 10 o'clock tonight. Let's go for a world record stream for me. All right, let's get this helmet over with. 
Okay, so just eyeballing the helmet, I'm gonna flare out the bases of this of these things here. So let's do Shift D. Um, I'm gonna go through here and I'm just gonna do a scale edge loop complete, and I'm just gonna kind of flare these out just a bit here, and then I'm gonna go through just kind of work my way back just slightly. There we go, and then yep, that goes in. Um, Depending on the reference you're looking at, this could be this could have a little notch. Oops. Um, or not. I guess I'll just leave it alone. Uh, I am gonna flatten this out though. So here. Is there enough space around the eyeball? Um, again, I'm just gonna kinda armor, backpack, chest, head, and neck hole. Okay, that's just like kind of a simple bevel. This is kind of rounded. You know what, I'll go ahead and round that. Uh, these things have ridges, that's easy enough to do. Okay, this one's kind of doubled up. That's interesting, but I don't know that, again, that, that fidelity, I don't know if it's gonna print well, uh, but we can go ahead and add some ridges to this. So let's do Shift D. Um, okay, I think it's a good enough resolution. So what I'm gonna do is, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna say poly group, poly loop. So every other one of these, I'm gonna change to a poly group here. We're gonna do all these at once. Um, let's do an inset poly group all. Oh, and I wanna do region, not H poly. And then I'm gonna tap here to get those all the same. And then let's try Q mesh, holding down shift, and just kind of pushing along those surface normals. Increase PG, D for dynamic. Let's do, let's make this real soft. Increase level of one. Or in fact, maybe no crease. Let's see. That's still too soft. Increase level of one. Okay. Helmet. Ugh. This has some nasty pinching, doesn't it? Um, let's go into our move accu. Let's see if I can't get that a little closer. And again, this pinching, not ideal. I could go in and rebuild it so that it wouldn't have pinching, but it's gonna take longer than I feel like taking. Um, so we might just fix it up in the sculpt. Okay, um, again, looking at the reference, I'm looking at points. Everything's this is kind of rounded. This is kind of rounded. This is kind of rounded. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. Although I don't, you know, I'm gonna keep that top point. I like it. Uh, but on this bottom one here, let's go in here and we'll say crease edge. Hold down Alt. Let's see if it actually increases because this crease is actually holding it. So we may have to go in. Oops. Huh. Uh, we may have to go in manually and kind of round this out because I do want to keep that midline creased. It does look like it kind of holds its shape. In fact, let's do a crease level of three, smooth so of four on that one. Okay, we'll fix that in the sculpt as well. Uh, any other details on the helmet? Mostly it's just rivets and then those little alpha things pulled in. I'm definitely, I mean, God, we could try maybe building those in. That would be how I would do it if we were doing a real model. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do alpha drags. Okay, the rest of the stuff I'm just gonna alpha drag. I think on the helmet. Sorry, I'm being wishy-washy, um, but I'm indecisive on this one. Yeah. Okay. You know what? We're just gonna apply this as real geometry. Are you ready to do it? Okay. Let's save the version of this before we do that, so you can always come back to this one. <laughs> Three. So we're just gonna apply this geometry and we're just gonna start getting crazy. Sculpt, sculpt an alpha, sculpt an alpha. Anything on the side of the head here. These things have notches built in. Um, so let's crank up this crease level all the way up. Um, and it kind of comes in and, ooh. let me think, let me think. Let's do this. Control shift, I'm gonna go in here and slice an edge ring. You can insert an edge ring or slice an edge ring. Um, I'm going to say smooth so div of four, apply as real geometry. Let's try this. Um, man, 
I want to do this. Oh, okay. Heck. I'm going to turn on X symmetry, but it's going to be, I tap X to go into X symmetry, but I do it in the Z axis with L sim turned on. So I'm on my local symmetry axis. I'm going to go through here. We're just going to grab a simple cube on both sides with delete lower. Let's turn off the lines so we can see what we're doing here. And then on these cubes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these in about midway. And then I'm going to hold down control. And then we're going to scale out. And that is the overall shape I'm going for. So if I take these ones and I say, eh, first, let's hold down shift and shoot it down to the bottom. Uh, isolate this. Delete. Uh, sorry, split. Hidden. Move this down. So this is everything off except for these two. And we're going to say subtractive mesh, live boolean. So that's the resulting mesh that I want. We're going to put a little screw or something in there. Is that about right? Ooh, nah. A little bit thicker down the middle. Something like this. Okay, uh, one thing I do need <clears throat> for these is uh, we're going to do a group by normal. So all of our edges are all of our, and also a mirror and weld in the Z axis with LSIM turned on. Okay, okay. And then on this one too, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say crease all and do a smooth subdiv of like four just so I get more geometry that kind of matches the fidelity of this uh, resulting mesh or this mesh right here. So again, one more time, uh, we're gonna say dynamic subdivision, make Boolean mesh append. So it shoots it down to the bottom, our U mesh here. Let's go check it out. Um, these polygroups can be the same. Okay, those are separate. Whew. Okay, we're in good shape, we're in good shape. Um, we wanna turn on transform symmetry in the Z, local sim on. I'm gonna turn off X symmetry temporarily just so we can get rid of this one. Delete hidden, we'll just do one side. X symmetry back on, zero measure, half, depth size down to zero, keep group smooth groups down to zero. Half, 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 half. Crease PG, crease level of two, smooth div of three. Um, I think it's just bolts or cylinders. Um, let's just grab a cylinder, I guess. Split mass points. Uh, we'll just run a crease on this one. D, two and three is probably fine. We'll stick these back in here. Um, it's about a little less move here. So that's our U mesh. Here's our working mesh. We don't need live booleans anymore. So these working meshes we don't need. Delete, delete, something like this. Turn back on. What else we got? What else we got? We got some bolts on this head. Let's go to our, um, we made this earlier. We made a rivet brush. So let's make these all a consistent size. So control tap here on the corners here. Working our way around the head, maybe one here. Don't see any on the back. Let's, uh, you know what? Mm, we need to adjust that depth. Not that much. Oh, that's another one of those two. Nope. <clears throat> doesn't have the good lord was it at 8 originally okay something like that okay uh, at the corners just above there and then just above here about uh, control shift drag just over a little piece of this control shift a split hidden that's just going to be alpha detail anything else we have a line over the head i'm just going to skip that okay 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 we may need to put in a little blocker in there that's fine okay let's move on down to this thing now let's go in here to dynamic apply so it's real geometry let's hit control d one more time Let's go into, um, let's take our standard brush and clone it off. Let's grab, we don't have a pill alpha. Um, alphas. 
military. Pop this in here. We'll say drag wrecked. If we go through here, is the intensity focal shift down to negative 100? RGB off. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, turn that off. Okay. Um, ooh, do we still have our. Yeah, we do. Let's do this. Let's get this into place and we'll see where's the. What placement are we looking for? So again, uh, RGB turned on. And underneath brush, samples. Spotlight projection on. Yes. Paint. Yes. Um, render fade opacity. Yes. Brush, alpha, yes. Hold down alt, yes. Uh, go back in our history to where nothing is. Control tap that point in history. And now if we turn off poly paint, will it stay off is a question. Yeah, well, you can do it just last. So you can go through here and you can bump it out or bump it back, whatever depth we want. And again, if you want to measure that depth, you may need to go in here and say uh, WY with your transpose line and you can just click and drag. So if you kind of click and drag out, um, you know, every one of these major lines is a, oh wait, that's even bigger. These major lines are a millimeter. So this is a millimeter from here to here. And then this is a half a millimeter. Whew. We're really taxing scale here. Oh, well, who cares? Okay, we got that. Let's go ahead and control tap this point in history twice. And this is very destructive, which is why I'm always hesitant to be like, let's just subdivide and commit. It's like, no, I can't go back if I do that. That's not true. You can always go through and reproject and rebuild and it's not a huge deal. There's a million different ways to get, get back to where you were, even if it's just going to a, a previous version. But um, I'm always such a baby about it. Um, okay, same thing on here. If we want to help out any of these creasing, you know, in lieu of doing good subdivision modeling, we're going to say dynamic apply. We're going to go in here to H polish brush, hold down alt, and we'll just kind of, there we go. Da, 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 da. Uh, let me see. Clay brush, feather touch, H polish, big brush, hold down alt, and now we can actually probably isolate these. Oops. Now we have subdivision levels. We haven't dynameshed it or killed our subdivision history, so it's not like I have to do it on the highest subdivision level. Um, but I am. In fact, let's hit Control D one more time. There we go. That'll maintain our edges a little bit more. And then as we go through here, we can just again just H polish our way to victory over crappy sub modeling. Uh, also, if we go down here, let's go down to level four maybe, you can see this pinching where we had those um, triangles. Bad idea on my part, but it is what it is. You can hold down shift, start smoothing and let go of shift and that will push those points over the volume. So you can kind of get rid of that stressed pinching there and at least in that area. And then um, this is a real bad pinching. This probably, I probably, oh, is that rounded? Yeah, it is kind of rounded. That's okay. So we'll go through here. Now we're, now we're committed. I'm just going to go through here and uh, I could try using Boolean Pro, but I'm just going to go through here manually. And again, we're working at scale. So don't get too caught up in like the minutia. I'm just using Trim Dynamic and a little bit of H polish here. Maybe a little bit of pinch if I need to, to even it out. And this is where I use a tablet, just a plain old tablet for everything. Whenever I get into like finesse hard surface sculpting, that's where I kind of wish I had a Cintiq type thing. Um, just because it can get real finicky with line. It's almost like inking something, you know, if I'm, if I'm drawing, if I'm drawing, I can, or sketching, I can get away with just a tablet. If I'm inking something, ugh, tablet may or may not do it. Some people can, 
Um, actually, I think what the probably the biggest deal is good artists can do it. Um, I'm not one of them. Never claim to be a good artist. And then we'll just, now that we've got that trim dynamic, we can go through here and we can just smooth that out. So just a little bit of a kind of a half chamfer, half bevel. I'm sure there's a technical term for that. And then uh, like a variable radius fillet as it kind of goes thicker to slightly thinner down here. And then this gets a little wobbly up here. Uh, let's go down to certain level three maybe. Use your subdivisions if you have them. Okay, okay. Um, now this might be tricky. So what I might need to do is go down here to morph target. Store morph target if I'm gonna do anything real drastic on here. Because this might have been an instance where modeling this piece separately and then modeling this piece separately and then booleaning those together and Z remeshing would have really helped because it would have resolved this edge for me. But what I did was I rebuilt it low and then I'm stuck with a little bit of pinching. Not ideal. And I wonder if I could project back. I could, I could. Boy, you know, I could pop this off and actually rebuild it. If I wasn't live streaming, I would probably do that. I would probably go back to the low res, pop this off, give it some interior space, pop this off, re-round it out, and then I could um, just get rid of that. But you know what? It's gonna be this big. I don't care that much. You know what? I'll fix it up in Photoshop when I post the renders. <laughs> That's the real trick. Fix it in that post. Okay, this needs to be a little bit wider, it looks like. Okay, all this other stuff. Okay, we do have a leg plate here. Oh, we gotta do the gloves too, damn. Okay, here and again, we're working at scale, so I don't wanna go too, too nuts, but Let's give it a shot. So half these gloves are going to be tubes and then the other half are going to be plates. Let's beef these up just a tiny bit. And these are literally just taken from, if you hit the comma key, go in here to project. Uh, there's a male Z project in here. If you don't want to kill your session, you can go in here to load tools from project. You can just grab that one. Um, and then I just literally have that hand. Um, I'm gonna space these fingers out just a little bit more so I can get a little more resolution out of them. Let's do Shift D, W, Control Drag. Let's hit Y. Control Drag down. Oh, it's like, ah, it looks soft. Fade opacity down. Go through here, I'm just gonna space these fingers apart. Come on, Control Drag. Boy, it just does not want to follow this geo, does it? And you could make polygroups for all these, uh, which I maybe should do, but I, okay, this will be fine. So this is kind of a working mesh. Uh, now let's go ahead and make it a concept mesh so we can, let's go ahead and say dynamic apply. And uh, we're gonna play, be playing it a little bit fast and loose, but uh, I think it'd be okay. So uh, in fact, you know what? I'm not even gonna bother going in here and like doing this stuff. I think I can just pop pieces of geometry out and finesse them as needed. So I'm gonna say, okay, um, let's go here and say geometry, divide one more time, delete lower. Let's hit Q, let's go along the back. Eh, let's use mask pin here over up and that's going to be and we're going to do all these at once all these little pieces and i'm going to have filler i'm just going to use the pre-existing speaking of <clears throat> duplicate this off <clears throat> excuse me so i have something to go fill back on and then also do the wiring underneath uh say so control tap here so we've got let me scooch this around so i can see what i'm doing okay we have one and this basically goes up to the knuckle here. And again, I don't have to go all the way exactly where it needs to be because I can always move the geometry where it needs to be. I'm more concerned about making sure I get my geometry where it needs to go. In fact, I can even just do one finger 
and uh, duplicate it around. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm tempted to go through here and just mask, but I think Siri Mesher, if we're doing this all at once, might have a wee problem. Okay, so Control Alt Tap. Um, again, we can we don't need to sharpen these up just yet. We can do that on the geometry side, and then the thumb's also going to be it's, its own kind of deal. So it looks like the thumb goes kind of all the way around. Actually, this kind of goes down here a little more, and then the thumb kind of goes around here. I'm, you know, this shows the thumb wrapping all the way around. I'm gonna cap it. I'm artistic license. I'm gonna cap it about here. So the armor plating is gonna go on the back, and then we're gonna free up those joints to allow a little bit more movement without having to contend with a big piece of metal having to move around. And then uh, just another one here, and they all kind of have rounded fingers and then flat backs. So we'll just do that here, and then Control Alt. Okay, Control Alt Tap. Okay, I think we're in good shape. So Control W, isolate, Geometry Modified Topology, delete hidden. There is a macro polish polygroup borders. So we'll just run that, and then um, that'll get rid of the alias little corner edges. There's something weird going on there. I guess we'll find out. Okay, zero mesh half, depth size down to zero, and then we'll just simplify this. And this is going to be our just panel geometry. And again, if it starts, you know, we want these ends to be rounded, but we want these corners to be sharper. So I'm going to say you go to flat along the back. Same with you. Same with you. And then rounded on the tips is fine. And then, yeah, these can be flat corners. Good enough. Let's try one more. Huzzah. And then massage these as needed. Okay. And then how fat is his hand? Pretty chunky. Okay. We'll fudge these as needed. So Q mesh, all polygons. We're going to pull up a little bit. I'm actually going to go to the back and then hold down shift as I oop, poly group ball. Hold down shift as I pull in. Uh, you can also use panel loops for that. I tend to you just hop into Z modeler real quick. And then as far as the other fingers, first let's get these uh, move brush, auto masking, topological. And these are pretty close. In fact, ooh, now that I look at them, these actually go to corners too. That's okay. So here, these get real close, topological. And then this front end is the rounded part. And I'm really not, now that I see it, um, hmm, let's do this. Isolate, delete hidden, same. Insert, single edge loop, let's get rid of this one. Do slide, edge loop complete. And, I don't know if you noticed that, but if you have topological turned on and your draw size is one, you can move around entire pieces. It's another quick way to do it. Um, so what was I doing? Oh yeah, so we're gonna square these off. And then, um, actually there's a line across here, we can, we can build that in. Uh, we're gonna square these off, oh yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say Q mesh polygroup ball we're gonna go up a little bit, and then we're gonna hold down shift as we pull on Q mesh poly group ball. Oh, stupid. Q mesh all polygons. And then I need to make these all one polygroup, sorry. Q mesh polygroup all and then ooh, I'm just losing my place here uh, I was going through here and I wanted to make sure oh yeah that was inset oh. okay that's fine so we can go through here we can say yeah whatever 
And then now what I'm going to do to inset this, hmm, you could try this. Let's say Q mesh poly group all out. And then to get those a little bit closer, and then I'm going to do a collapse poly loop just to kind of pull those in. You could do an inset up here, um, but my biggest thing is trying to get these things closer. Oh, you know what? Help. I'm just going to do one side. Delete hidden. We can always mirror it over later. See, that's, that's where <laughs> Q-Mesh gets in the way, is that when I get too close to something, it wants to snap together. Um, so if this collapsed polygroup worked fine. This one, okay, I guess they're all working. It's just weird. It's getting the desired effect, but okay. Okay, so for the rest of these, let's hold down Control-Shift, grab these, Control-Shift-A, Control-Tap, Invert, Mask W, control drag over. Let's go ahead and set this here. Yoink, move it into place here. Rotate it down, control drag over. I'm just using camera based rotation here. And let's scale this down the axis just a tiny bit. Because his fingers are getting smaller. Move brush. And obviously, you can pose those fingers out however you'd like, but those are just taken from the, again, the ZBrush mail that's in the project here. And we still have Move Topological turned on so we can kind of fine tune the individual pieces, or you can turn that off and you can go through and you can just kind of move everything into place as needed. Uh, let's do a quick, quick, um, actually, let's do this real quick. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> Group by normals. <laughs> Uh, crease PG, dynamic, just a low crease, uh, maybe even lower. Let's get a soft fall off here. Topological back on. Alrighty. And we'll, we'll mush those a bit later. So now on the tops of the hands, are those different? Uh, we just have a, basically a plate, and then this is all just ribbing. Um, we have a version of this we can always go back to. I'm going to go through here and just, again, use our Damien standard. And we're just going to, you know what? Let's go around the meat of the, we'll, we'll cry tech this a little bit. Go around the meat of the hand. Uh, what else we got? We got this little part of the hand too, which is a nice kind of line. We'll just have these meet up underneath. And what else? Now we got these meet up too. I suppose if you wanted these to be perfect, you could try a thick skin solution, but or chisel brush with morph target turned on. And I think we'll be okay. And then uh, down the fingers, I guess they just got like tube fingers. Actually, underneath. Let's see how accurate. So these are all just all the way around. Uh, I guess they do have some for some grip. I don't really see the palms that much. Yeah. If, they, if I don't see the palms that much, they're not going to see the palms that much. So we'll just go through here and we'll just be like, again, we're printing small. So. The indication. Just little indications of detail. There's something going on underneath there. It's gonna be painted black. I don't know. Go as nuts as you want to. I, if you if you'd like. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's a more elegant solution for. I mean, if we would have set these hands up right, we would have poly groups for easy selection, so we can just kind of fly through and do what we need to do. But uh, again, playing it fast and loose helps sometimes. Other times, it can kind of bite you. Around, around. So 
Michelin Man fingers. I'm trying to think, there, there's a number of brushes that'll be good for this, not only for digging in, but also, also if you wanted to kind of go around uh, and go nuts. There's a couple different ways to do that, but I think this will work fine. Damien Standard. And we can run Contrast, Target if we want to, or Pinch Brush, um, a couple of different ways. Yeah, it's fine. It's kind of kind of pains me a little bit, but it's fine. If and when we ever do a cinematic version of this. have to spend a little bit more time making this right, but man, once you were done, honestly, once you're done, you'd probably realize you wasted a lot of time because unless the camera really gets in on there, nobody cares, but man, when you're doing that kind of modeling, why not finesse it? Yoink. But again, we're just quick and dirty. One last finger, let's carry this on through. Sure. One more. And this one too, you could hold down W, control drag down, do a uh, hide point. It's visibility hide point invert. That might be a little bit easier. your geometry visibility menu. Okay, okay. I'm gonna beat this up just a tiny bit. Okay. Uh, let's see. Cool, yeah. Uh, Zero mesh here is uh, with the zero mesh. Keep groups, smooth groups. If you already have smooth groups, turn that down to zero. If you're slicing or if you're using booleans or whatever. Becca Wallace. Yes, I've been. Uh, <laughs> this is what I'm doing today. I might actually have to take another quick break. We might have to pull this into a two-parter. Um, do do do. Keep edges. Yep. Yeah, you got it. Hey, birdie. Um, Still streaming for this morning. <laughs> yep, this is part two. Uh, beautiful, thank you, Pixel Bucket. My pleasure. All right, let's see. Uh, this little elbow piece is kind of a little bit wonky, isn't it? Let's straighten that out just a bit. Let's finesse that just tiny, just a little. And this is just, you know, Shift D, it's just super simple geometry. And actually, it's probably a little safer to go out of dynamic, because if you have dynamic turned on, you might be pulling those verts a little further and a little more wobbly than you may be expecting. Um, so I'd say hop out, finesse, pixel finesse, vert finesse a little bit. And then once you're done, um, you can hit D. I'm just rounding this out just a little bit more. Alrighty. Okay, we've got backpack is the furthest along. Helmet's doing all right. Chest is getting there. I guess let's work our way down the mesh before we get too caught up and stuff. So this one here, there's not a ton of detail. It's basically just those alphas pushed in. So let's go ahead and commit. I'm scared to. Afraid of commitment in ZBrush, but let's go in here and we'll say uh, dynamic apply. So it's real geometry now we're stuck. If we want to soften these edges, we can hold down shift and smooth it, but I think, I think those are okay. And then now if we want to put an alpha on here, let's subdivide this one more time. Let's go into our, oh, my butt hurts, standard with our alpha here. Um, where do we put that? Let's pull our reference back. Let's see if we're, yeah, we can even snap back to our to our snappy that we had earlier. Let's paint on uh, standard brush RGB 100. That's where alpha's gonna go. Uh, again, render fade opacity. So this is where our alphas need to be, give or take. Um, 
hold down alt and again you know we can we can do what is it called Re adjust last if ooh boys are getting a little close for my taste i'm going to vaguely follow these maybe not exactly and if you want to do you could do a 3 3 alpha brush or you could actually do alpha in the horizontal but i think it would squish our alphas but anyway you can always go in here to alpha um, like H tiles up to three, and then when you go in here, you can drag out three, but see how it kind of squishes. Um, that's the only thing bad about that. So go ahead and kill that. You got these here, and let's go ahead, let's go back here. Control tap that point in history. Actually, let's go back one more so we can get rid of that polypank. So when we go all the way forward and we do a just last, that eh, still has our polypank. So we can kind of pull in a little bit further. Okay, render, fade opacity down to zero. Okay. Chest, chest is kind of done. This pad is just plain Jane, looks like. I'm not digging how it goes straight in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit W, control tap back here. I'm going to drag, alt drag across here to kind of set my pivot. I'm going to scale out and scale out just a bit. And you know what? Let's thicken this up. We're printing small. He's a chunky boy as it is. Make him a little chunkier for scale. And okay. Okay, working our way down the mesh. Uh, ooh, except for those shoulder pads. I'm gonna have to take a break before I tackle the shoulder pads, depending on how fancy we want to get. Um, if we leave them as is and it's just gonna be in the paint, they're fine. Um, but if we're gonna go and do like the whole like weave pattern and stuff like here, that's gonna take me a minute to figure out. Um, arms. So this little bump out here with this little bump in. We can do those pretty quick, I think. All right, so, okay. So looking at this wrist, um, match my reference here. So there's our thumb, here's this. Actually, this needs to kind of bend down a little bit. That's a cool detail. Uh, so. And it's something to think about too, is whenever you're going to do this type of thing, you usually want to scallop or dig in on these parts so you have a little bit of room for those joints to move around. You don't want metal crunching into metal while you're working, right? And by working, I mean blasting through space for the emperor or whatever. So uh, let's go ahead and say split hidden on this one. Um, let's take, I'm just going to take the top off, delete hidden, control shift, slice. Circle, let's control tap this endpoint in history to get rid of that saved history you had. I'm just gonna take a little little divot out of here. Control shift tap, delete hidden, zero mesh same. Let's get that back. And then we'll say Q mesh, extrude polygroup all, extrude that downwards, flip. And then let's go ahead and I'm gonna put a crease. Oops. Uh let's say crease PG. I'm gonna crease Z Muller brush crease edge here we'll pull this back and then d for dynamic let's do a crease level of two smooth set of a three and okay now back to the wrist so we have this basic geometry and we can cut in panel lines as needed but we do have uh, panels that are kind of sitting on top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this I'm going to change this crease level to 15 on the duplicate I'm going to change the smooth subdiv up to 5 let's say apply that and I'm going to go into solo mode and from the side I'm just going to kind of eyeball or you know what we could do let's go ahead and say delete lower um, if we turn polyframe on Let's just isolate this one and this one. Control W. In fact, we just need this one. Delete hidden. So um, 
it's back a little bit from the wrist. So we'll say slice curve here. So back off from the wrist. We'll isolate this one, say delete hidden. And then it kind of comes from back here. I'm gonna alt tap once to kind of get a little bit of a Bezier curve here. Yeah, that's right. And then um, it's kind of a little bit bendier. And then alt tap twice. And then we'll hit, hit alt tap one more time to kind of Bezier curve that. So then this is what we're left with, delete hidden. Let me make sure this is right-ish. So here and then around to the other side, it kind of stops, I don't know, right about here. Close enough. Delete hidden, zero mesh half. Keep groups off, uh, X symmetry off. And you don't have to do half. It, it, you kind of bit me there, but you can do whatever subdivision you want. Um, if it's having a little bit of an issue through here, sometimes it can get caught up on weird geometry. I'm going to do a quick weld points just to kind of make sure everything's welded. See if that doesn't help. There we go. Half. It's a little bit too low, I think, because we want this to stay to a point. So if you ever, you can always go through and move stuff. I'm just going to go do a quick project all. Um, oh, you know what? Since this isn't real geometry, it's going to project to a faceted version. Are we ready to commit? Let's see. Not quite. On this one here, we're going to have to do an inset polygroup all, and then a Q mesh polygroup all, hold down shift, and then a crease PG. Got a nice chunky wrist thing. That might be a little too chunky, maybe. I don't know. D for dynamic. And if we like that, we can commit. Is there anything else we need to dig in? I think we're okay. So now if we say on this one, let's do increase level of three, smooth subdivision of four, because we can always smooth these later. It's not a big deal. So we'll go ahead and apply that. Alt tap, W, oops, we'll just do a project all. Actually, now that I've bulked this part out. I may need to go through here. Let's turn on transparency. Yeah, just a bit. Slice this back just a hair. Delete hidden. Project all. Q mesh. Fudge. And then I can adjust that as needed. So let's go through here. We'll say crease PG. We'll run a crease tolerance, grab that corner. D for dynamic. Two, three. I may need to beef that up just a bit. Okay, so that's one arm. The other arm, I think, has this exact same panel, but a few more details built in. So I'm going to say, I'm going to duplicate instead of just mirror and welding. And I'm going to say mirror across the X. I should do LSIM off. I'm doing that. And then on this side here, let's see if I can't just eyeball it. Oh. Let's turn off all our polypanes here. Hmm. Forgot I didn't mirror those. X symmetry turned on. X symmetry turned on. So now. We have this panel here. It does have the little beefy boy wrist. And then it's also got a few more details um, that I think we can just use the pre-existing geometry. We don't even have to get that fancy, like Booleans and stuff like that. So let's try it. So close to the wrist here, looks like here, 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 and here. Um, I need that geometry. And then down here towards the wrist, here to about here. Hmm. Okay, let's duplicate this off. Go into solo mode. That was weird. Okay, so what I can do for this wrist is I'm going to say isolate auto groups, Q mesh polygroup all, pull that through. Come on. 
Thank you. And then this one here. Do I want to use filler? I really don't want to use filler, but it is kind of deep. Let's take this one here, QMesh Polygroup Ball. I'm going to pull this in even more. So I can go in here and we can do an inset Polygroup Ball legacy and pull this in. So hopefully we can get some decent... Uh, let's do another inset. And then we'll uh, just a very slight inset. And then QMesh Polygroup Ball. Hold on Shift as we push through. Not too far, but just enough. So now let's try crease PG and we'll also, eh, let's do this, try crease PG and then manually what I'm going to do is I'm going to crease these corners here because these stay kind of like so. So now, okay, okay, okay. So now let's see if I can't crease edge of complete alt D, fine, and then back on our other one here, we have this one. Let's do a quick auto group so I can just steal this, delete hidden. Uh, this kind of comes out just a tad, looks like maybe. And then QMesh Polygroup All, and then Flip, and then Crease, Dynamic, maybe give it a little bit of Yeah, maybe not that much. Something like this. And then inside of here, they look like cylinders, but we'll use our. We went ahead and made it. Our rivet. Let's make sure these are the same size. They should be pretty close. Oof, maybe 6, 5.7. Yep. Control. Ah, it's a little smaller. Maybe 5 even. Control shift A, split hidden. All right, we got beefy boy. And I am going to turn off poly paints. Just emphasize that just a bit. Man, maybe even this too. Although these probably need to be the same poly group if I'm going to be pulling that shenanigans. Arms, arms, arms. All right. Legs. Kind of the same thing for the legs. Uh. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of technique going on in this one. This is mostly just rinse and repeat, so I apologize for that. But he's getting there, slowly but surely. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um. Beautiful. Finland. Yes. Finally, we get a Finland person in the chat. I've been waiting. Uh, where are we? We're going. Okay. Waste. Waste is down here. Okay. So we've got belts. We've got packs. Oh, I need to do those packs too, don't I? Yeah, these should be pretty easy. We'll do quick packs and then we'll do. Do we need to do a loincloth? We can do a loincloth. It's not a big deal. We can borrow our skull and just do a little decorative thing over it. Um, that should be pretty quick. And then whatever that thing is, I need to look that up. If anybody knows what that is, let me know. Let's box a... looks like a femur or something. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, maybe a relic. These are all pretty... these are all pretty flat. I actually am going to beef these up. Uh, Q-Mesh Polygrip Ball for both these, actually. And you know what? Let's increase a little two. Okay. Uh, belt, I don't have a real good look at. It's basically just. Uh, I guess that's a leather. You can leather belt that, no problem. Let's do it. So, uh, for a leather belt, it goes all the way around. Um, I think it's okay as is. So let's do, uh, let's go into solo mode here, shift D. Uh, it does look like it has a little bit of detail in here. So what I'm going to do is say insert multiple edge loops, keep polygroup, we'll put one right down the middle. We'll say bevel edge loop complete. Just pull these up 
and then right along this, actually let's do this, let's do slide edge loop complete, just a little closer to those corners. And again, I'm getting into the details. A lot of this stuff probably isn't gonna matter, but I gotta do it, inset. You know, let's make these both the same kind. Polygroup here and here, so we can do both these at the same time. Inset, polygroup ball legacy, we'll just pull in a little bit. And then Q mesh polygroup ball, and let's hold down shift and push this back. Crease PG, uh, D for dynamic. Again, it's the detail is over cranked than what I would do again for a cinematic leather, but it's probably still too small for what the end result's gonna be. Let's go ahead and say crease, two, three, beef it up. Now, yep. this is our what? Ooh, what is that? That's just the thing hanging out. Let's just delete that out of our scene here. Okay, okay. All right, you know what? Um, I don't wanna stop it. Give me two minutes. I'm gonna say mic off. Be back in a second. Oh, much better. Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, two says it's a reliquary holding the bones of some random saint. So it's a steel box of bones in it. Beautiful. I can look that up. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, panel and scribe lines. Tricky to learn. And then once, uh, yeah. So we're going to do that. I think that's going to be our last pass before we go and start posing. Um, and the reason why I'm trying to keep um, subdivision history so when we go into pose, uh, transpose master it should be nice and lightweight that's always a really fun thing to have so i mean I, he's coming together you know i think he'll be all right yeah yeah um polygroups is usually just group by normals as far as the colors um yeah so you're talking about like uh painting in the quads so basically if we have just polygons sitting here just hold down alt and you can paint and then if you let go of Alt and just tap, you can just switch colors out. Um, you can also, if you ever need to, this is something I don't see done very often, but it, I don't see a lot of people using this, but I use it all the time. If I ever want to say, hey, this purple polygroup, I'm gonna start painting on it and then tap Shift to inherit it, and then I can paint that polygroup wherever I want. So that way you can 
bleed uh, polygroups to other areas like this one here, shift, and then they just clean up this area. That's just a fun little thing. Yes, alt. Yeah, like uh, Peter says, alt paint. There we go. Alrighty, okay. We're working our way down, working our way down. We got a, a nice, we got a belt here. This is just like a round belt. I'm actually going to, you know what? He's got kind of a, So this one, uh, you know, if we're gonna be copying this thing around, I should probably give it a little bit more love. Let's go in here to trim dynamic. Uh, you know what, let's just do run a quick, just a uh, polish by features, just tap that a couple times. Um, Come here, Andrew Kerwazy. Skull. Uh. I think I know what a damn skull looks like by now, right? Alt, standard brush, RGB off, the intensity's fine. So we'll go through here and we'll clean this up just a tiny bit. Uh, through here, through here and soften and smooth. And then Damien standard, we can go through here and just put in, oh, we still have our alphas on. Uh, alpha, H tiles back down to one. <laughs> There we go. Hold down Alt to kind of pull out to a surface and then just push back in. So again, we can just kind of, you know, we'll just use the clay brush just to kind of dig this back in here. Yoink, 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 yoink. Okay, uh, Control D one more time. Three, let's go ahead and move this back. And then up. Oof. This geometry kind of got away from me with zero measure, but um, you know what? There's ways. Eh, that's fine. Look on my YouTube channel. You can see ways where you can kind of cut in panels or cut in loops and uh, avoid some of that nastiness. But uh, I think we're okay. Let's go in here and scooch this in. Cheekbones, zygomatic here, temporal line. It's where your little chewing muscles go. All right, it looks nice. Oh, there we go. Looks nice and angry. So here is one skull. Let's go ahead. I'm just going to duplicate this off instead of control dragging out since he has subdivisions. And this now here's the thing. If I'm going to print this at 32 mm, millimeters tall. This is just going to turn to muck. That's the only bad thing, right? Um, for my cinematic model, it's perfect. Uh, for this model, maybe not so much. Yeah, you know what? Let's do this. Let's ex let's try. <laughs> let's try. Big old Texas size belt buckle here. A little smaller. We'll push this back in, and then this we're going to use as an, another design element that I can kind of see. So I'm going to alt tap this here. Let's go through this at shifty. I'm going to use it goes it goes down pretty far. So I'm going to say control shift get rid of this. Judge modify topology delete hidden. Alt drag. Let's get rid of all this. Delete hidden. So this will be our little halo. Dynamic. Okay, that's a start. Oops. Be very careful when you're moving stuff around. I'm gonna hold down, uh, go out of X symmetry, go to unmatched mesh center, so that while I'm doing that, I don't actually accidentally cross my streams. Okay, so we've got this. It's looping around the head. Uh, I need to pull this out to two points. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say Shift D. Let's go down here to give some real geometry. We'll divide this once. Uh, delete lower so I can play around this geo some more. I don't need this one. Insert single edge loop. We'll hold down Alt. Uh, get rid of any. Yeah, we might need that side one actually now that I think about it. Judge modified a mirror and weld. What is going on with my mirroring? Okay, so we've got this piece here, and I'm gonna scale this back. Uh, you know what? Let's alt tap on the back here to find that direction. And we'll pull this back just a bit and we'll match this to the belt. Okay. So it has spikes coming out. 
Um, so let's do this. Let's say insert single edge loop, uh, multiple edge loops, keep poly group. So we put one right down the middle. Let's do an increase while we're working. Now I'm going to do a quick bevel edge loop complete, give ourselves some breathing room around those edges. And then it looks like it comes out and then comes to a, goes to a point. So we'll put in another, hmm. Yeah, we'll do this. And we need one down the middle. So I'm going to bevel this here temporarily. Alt tap where I want these things, one here and maybe one here. Q mesh polygroup all. Pull these out here. Let's go ahead and just run a crease dynamic. Okay, so this needs to come to a point, but if I put a, let's temporarily do this insert again, multiple edge loops, we'll put one right down the middle and then we'll collapse these later. So we'll do shift D. I'm going to say collapse edge two points here and then they go they collapse back down to do they yeah the midline here something like this judge modified topology mirror and weld we'll collapse this down collapse this down uh oh Turn off X-symmetry, what's going on here? Hmm. It's weird. Okay, X-symmetry turned on. I'm gonna do a quick weld points just to make sure everything's welded. And then I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna collapse all this down. Okay, something like that. Then we'll go ahead and widen this one out just a tiny bit. Let's go to unmesh mesh center, scale it. And then in fact, let's go ahead and just collapse these down too, because I want to maintain the roundness here and I don't want to have that interrupted by this little weird mesh. All right, let's see how this thing smooths. Let's see if we can do a collapse poly loop. See if I'll grab that, too much. Okay, fine, we'll collapse edge. goes around and meets that one. Okay, okay, okay. Let's run a crease dynamic two and three. Let's push this. Actually, let's move this down and push it back. Yeah, this is probably way too small. Yeah, I can always fix it. Or delete it. We can just put a put a what there? A cylinder like we had before. Move this down. Let's go ahead and set up the world axis. Squinch, squinch. And then in this one, I wonder if we can just do a yeah, maybe just an inflate. Why not? Yeah. And then that move brush here. Okay. Oh yeah, loin cloth. You know what the loin cloth I might put on there after he's posed because that's going to be affected by how he moves, and I'm probably just going to make that separately. So we're in good shape. Um, working our way down his legs. It's, again, it's going to be the exact same thing as the arms. It's basically cut in a panel where there's supposed to be a panel. So let me go to my legs reference here. Arms and hands, legs and feet. So on one thigh, it's gonna be a little bit different than the other thigh, but it's gonna be cut in with a few more doodads and alphas drawn on there. So first we need a pad and luckily those are symmetrical. So I'm going to duplicate this off. I'm gonna say crease level all the way up to 15, dynamic apply, hit control D a couple times because we're gonna be slicing and painting maybe. Um, you know what, let's go back to our reference and we'll use our arrow keys and We'll position, you know, I'll just do one side of the leg here. Oop, RGB on, uh, brush, spotlight projection. It's basically 
here. Let's go in here instead of doing um, render. What is it? Instead of doing render fade opacity, we're just going to say color fill object with a low RGB intensity with white selected. And now we have panel line location and the general idea of where this needs to go. So instead of slicing, I'm just going to go through here and mask because I have a feeling I'm going to have to kind of resolve this as I work my way around. So as we go to the side of the leg, it kind of comes down until it hits, I don't know, about yay high here. And then it kind of goes back up, kind of a big sweep through here. And then up. And then matches over. Eh, who cares? Something like this. Close enough. Here. Now, here's a thing, if you're so inclined. Um, you can just hit Control W on this, isolate this one, do an auto groups, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. Um, oops, we'll delete lower, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. So it's the same on both sides. So now we can quickly just grab these two poly groups, make them all one. Um, and then again, we need to smooth these out. So I'm going to say geometry modified topology, delete hidden, and we'll just go up to that macro polish poly group border. I have assigned to a hotkey. And then um, eh, we can keep X emitter turned on, zero mesher down to zero, target polygon count of, I don't know, two. Don't need to keep groups. And we'll keep maintain our corners as it works its way through. Oops, hold on just a second. Yes. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Boolean's definitely a good way to go. Uh, any particular reason doing Warhammer piece this time? Um, they said in the ZBrush channel, uh, the streamer channel, that they were doing tabletop. So I was like, oh, let me do, let me do a, I've always wanted to do a <laughs> Warhammer piece. So I was like, now's a good reason to. Um, can I remove all those those gray paints in ZModeler easy without having to go over it immediately again? Um, once you have them, you can just you can merge you can just hit Control W and that'll polygroup what you have visible. Uh, yeah, but that may or may not be a good solution depending on what else you have going. Yeah, we'll do the ultramarine colors. Why not? Cool. Uh, read release. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, see, Z model or hard surface instead of Maya might could speed up the process. Um, kind of depends on how uh, comfortable you are. For me, I'm way slower in Maya than I am in ZBrush, for sure. But that's probably a me thing more than a universal truth. So I'll go ahead and put this here and then zero mesh half. Okay, is that about right? Oops, hold on. Okay, so we have this. Uh, I can't really see if it goes up to a corner or not, at least on my reference, but back here it kind of goes a corner. Okay, I think we're in good shape. So we have the basic panels here. So we'll say Q mesh, polygroup all. Actually, from this front, this should be a corner here. Now we can just run a crease, hit dynamic, make sure we're creased where we want it. Yep, and you know what? We'll do a crease level two, smooth so level three. Just to kind of get a little bit of a fall off here. Go in here and fudge as needed, good enough. So now we're gonna detail these ones out. Um, that's weird. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was looking at, I was looking at the wrong leg. I captured the leg of somebody else from the cinematic. Okay, so on this side, we have those alphas on there, and then on this side, we just have some buttons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, X you turned off, grab one of these, say delete, or I'm sorry, split hidden, uh, dynamic apply, hit Control D a couple times, and then now we can go in here. Again, we're just gonna play this one fast and loose. Instead of going through here and doing a bunch of Boolean nonsense or awesomeness, depending on your point of view, I'm gonna go in here to transparency. I'm gonna go in here to my clay brush and we're just gonna say um, clay brush in just, oops, clay brush in just a little bit. And then maybe a little bit bigger, clay brush in 
just a little bit. And then in here, let's grab something that doesn't have any subdivisions. And then we're gonna just put in, okay, for this top one, let's go in here to our trusty rivet. And we're just gonna pull a rivet into this top one here. We'll position it here and we'll say split mass points. Then for this bottom one here, we'll do a little bit of fancy footwork, not really. Uh, we'll go through here and we'll put in a cylinder and we'll say split mass points and we'll crease this just so we can see, make sure it's, uh, turn on L sim. I'll punch this in and then we're just going to, uh, let's do a group by normals, shift D. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna say inset polygroup all legacy. So we're gonna push this in. I don't know about yay much. We're gonna do another inset and we're gonna say Q mesh polygroup all, hold down shift and push in. We're gonna say crease PG, turn dynamic back on, move this into place. You can even scale it down on that axis a little bit here. Okay, and now I've probably been doing it. Um, so I'll turn off X symmetry and we'll just get rid of this one. And then on this one, X symmetry, and we'll just get rid of this one, sorry about that. And then on this side, let's see if we have the reference here. Uh, Shift Z, go back. Oh yeah, we did paint that, didn't we? So I'm gonna move this panel into place, go into solo mode, dynamic apply, hit Control D a couple times. Again, RGB turned on, just so I know where I kinda need to put these things. Um, RGB intensity down, color, fill object, go back to our alpha brush, hold down Alt, and we're just gonna pull along here, along here, a little further down. And you could use, now that I think about it, you could use masking with transpose, smart, or with transpose, so you don't have to do so much trial and error work. But uh, I'm already done, so why even bother? Uh, I'm gonna dig these in a little bit further. So back here, control tap, and we're gonna say adjust last about here. Solo, so you got one leg, we got the other leg. Let's go around to the side here. This one has uh, a little, a little thing here that's very similar to this. So you know what, we'll just steal it. And you know what? This looks like it also has a little bit of roundness to it. So let's go in here and we'll say, insert multiple edge loops, interactive elevation. And I'm just gonna click and pull this to round it out. Uh, let's do another crease PG, or sorry, uncrease all, then crease PG so we can, actually, you know what? These can probably be the same polygroup, right? Yeah, uncrease all, crease PG, D for dynamic. And in fact, let's just make this an insert mesh brush. B, create insert mesh new. And then now we can hop back over here and we can say stolen. All right, okay, we got that piece. And then we got back on the back here, uh, another alpha trio. And in fact, yeah, it's just on one side. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. It's pretty close to the edge there. So one, two, three. One, two, three, control tap, adjust last. Sink those in a little bit more. Control tap twice. Okay, this leg looks pretty plain Jane. Let me see if I can find another. Hmm. Yeah, this one's just plain except for the alpha in front. Okay, and then there's just different panel lines cut into this bottom. Um. Actually, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and we'll just use, you know what? Let's use, since we are committed on these, right? No, we're not committed to those. Man, that just frees me up to do it right. Hmm. All right, well, let's do it right. Control shift drag over this one with X symmetry turned off. 
split hidden. I'm going to isolate. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to isolate this one, say delete hidden, shift D. Oops, control N for new. Escape, escape, escape. What happened here? Oh no, I accidentally hit a hot key for an old old project. Oh, you know what? That's fine. We'll bring it back. Texture, select it back. There we go. Deleted. Let's move this back into place with our camera. So that's where our leg cuts need to be. So one more time, um, so we're going to say D, I'm going to say slide edge loop complete, um, let's do shift D. I'm going to slide this up just a tiny bit and then this one goes down and in so that's essentially where that cut needs to be. And that just goes around to the back. So what I can do is I do have existing geometry here. What's an easy way to do this? I'm going to say Alt, drag here, and this is just going to kind of go around the leg like so. I'm going to do an inset polygroup all solo. And then I'm going to do a split edge here and here. And then we're going to say delete edge here and here. Okay, okay. And then we're going to collapse edge U and U all the way around. So now I basically have a panel. So we have U get out of there, U get out of there. Geometry modified follows you delete hidden. And then I can go through here and I can say, let's even these out just a little bit more. Let's do an extrude just in case. Extrude all polygons. Pull these in, flip, crease dynamic, one side. Let's go in here and just use that up. Okay. Then on this side here, kind of the same deal. Let's say Shift D, Control Shift Tap, Judge Modified Topology, Delete Hidden. Um, let's bring back our reference, snap to it. Let's do a couple slides. We're going to say slide edge. So we're going to slide this edge over. Slide this edge up. And you know what? You can even slide this point. Here, and then <laughs> slide edge. Yoink and yoink. Okay, so this is essentially where that cut line is going to be. And I this will this will probably be smooth fine. Okay, so one more time. Oh, I keep hitting that. Oh, stop doing that. solo mode and on the back kind of the same deal so you're gonna be one poly group here and again you can just use chisel lines for this if I had already committed I absolutely would just be using chisel brushes but since I hadn't I went ahead and said and yeah, let's just do it let's just paste some panel lines in here so I'll straighten these out straighten these over A little bit of finesse. Okay, control shift. Um, so what's the easier way to do this? Can I do, let's go down here to, let's isolate this, control W. Let's try under geometry, crease. If we hold down control and drag, it'll give us bevel lines in between there. Um, panel loops will also do it. Let's go down here to edge loop. Uh, it'll delete loops, align loops. Um, panel loops, thickness, let's turn off double, 
turn the keep thickness down, polish down, zero. If we just do a panel loops, a really light panel loops, it'll actually do it for us. And you can actually do double on and it'll create panel loops for you. Then you can just run your crease and dynamic and fix whatever you need to. I'm going to work a little similar. So we can just do a quick panel loops and take that thickness way down. There we go. I'm just gonna isolate this and this. Delete hidden. And then now we'll do an extrude all polygons. Flip, crease dynamic. Okay, that I can live with. We can even go in here. Let's do a topological, move topological. So if I can just grab this one first, we just go through here and just kind of get these out of the way a little bit. Yeah, but panel loops are awesome. There's a panel loop preset plugin you can use. Have at it. Okay, okay. Working our way down the mesh. Let's do crease level of 15 on these. We're getting close, we're getting close. Mm. Copy the mesh and use an array. Uh, for what? Forget what part I was on. It's probably a better option. <laughs> if you if you can see in a reason to use array mesh, I would use it. Um, would you say this whole video I have to go studying? Uh, it'll be on my YouTube channel uh, and Twitch. It'll be there. It'll be there waiting when you come back. So this one has some detail. The other wrist, uh, I don't see a lot of detail on it, so I'm going to leave it. Okay, down here on the boot. This one, hmm, you know, this one I'm going to commit and I'm just going to scribe. What the hell with it? Dynamic, apply, uh, subdivide up. It should be fine. Let's do Shift Z, touch back in here. Let's get these things lined up. They're slight, they're ever so slightly different. Um, just to give me some angst, probably. So I'm going to turn off X symmetry for RGB. On this side, I'm going to go ahead and paint. Um, why it turns that off. This one. And then over here, it's kind of in this area. And then on the sides, nothing. That's it. That's all the detail that's on here. So let's go ahead and store a morph target for these again. I already had one for some reason. Uh, let's try, let's go into the orbs cracks. Let's crank up that intensity a bit and let's just go through here and see if we can't. Let's take our render fade opacity down just a bit. So if I go through here, yeah, crank that intensity way up. That'll give us a nice cut through here. You can also hold down shift if you want and then shift and then shift. Um, seems to be, let's try this. Let's go BC brush chisel chisel. Uh, we have a morph target saved, so that'll actually help us. Uh, let's try six. Kind of rough. I don't want to go up to millions. Ugh, you know what? I'm just going to try and finesse it with hands. So here, another thing we kind of maybe need to do. Let's try this. Let's go back up here to render fade opacity down. Let's go down here to subdivision level one. In fact, yeah, I think it'll let me do it. X image turned on. Yes, I need a poly group for these. Let's hope it doesn't destroy my poly groups when I go back up. Yay. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna isolate just between these two poly groups here. And I'm gonna go in here to masking between my groups here. So mask, control tap to invert that. And we're just going to go through here. Um, let's do a, let's control tap to blur it and then control alt tap to, uh, that's not really great. Hmm. That really was looking for it. Okay, let's see how this has to see how it goes. Mass by features groups, invert. I'm going to turn it off just so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to deflate just a tiny, tiny bit. And then I'm going to go through here manually. Ugh because my geometry is crap. I should have put a control loop around this, but I didn't. 
and can I just this is what happens when you know you take the easy route and then you're like that's ah, fine it's worked for so far whatever I need and then you'll do one thing where it's like oh no I gotta spend minutes of my life trying to finesse this into place and it's probably not going to work that great i was just looking for a little bit of a a split between these let's hold on shift let's turn down our z intensity just a bit i'm going to smooth this just a tiny bit i just wanted a little more separation between those okay so now that we have that let's go down here to back down to our morph target delete store so i have that to go back to if i need to we'll go in here to uh orbs cracks small brush size just go through here take our render fade opacity down just a bit so I'm going to say let's go all the way across chunk man is this really all I got I'm trying to avoid getting nuts but damn that resolution is just punishing me for some reason all right, so do I one more time. It's not sure where all that geo's going. And I want a fairly decent cut. And this is where, you know, when, you, when we were talking about like finesse drawing, you know what, let's lazy radius up just a tad. Or my tablet might be failing me or I'm failing myself because I can't do line work to save my life. Uh, of course, while we're doing that, X symmetry off. Because, of course, you don't want details on both sides. And then BMG. And then we can go in here with our morph brush wait what oh we subdivide it one more time Whew. you know what we'll do this because we can always clean it up right probably bmg morph brush this back and of course it's morphing poly paint too And then over here. I'm just gonna make it so it matches the foot position a little bit better. Okay, poly paint off. Render fade opacity down. We can go over those chisel lines again if needed. Um, kind of the same deal on these ones. Let's say chisel on, X symmetry turned off. Apply. So divide up a few times and Morph target. It's always amazing to me how much geometry you need to get a clean result. It's fast, but man. How many times am I going to do that? subdivide up and then forget to store a damn morph target. So tedious. Fire enough. Good enough. Gotta remember what scale we're working at. 
Okay, okay. Now, on these here, um, I could use booleans of these, but let's go ahead and just say apply, subdivide. You can tell I'm getting restless. Transparency on. So, oh, I forgot. Underneath uh, preferences draw, we turn our back opacity way down. We were kind of drawn through when we were doing the, the feathers here. So, looks like it's both the same on the top and the bottom. So, we're going to go here. Oops, store morph target. So, we're just going to go all the way down here and then here. And across, and then across. BMG. And we do, the good news is we haven't had to resort to Dynamesh. So we do have subdivision history. So when you get to posing, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a real hassle. It should be actually pretty quick. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, boots, you know what, for tabletop, I'm not gonna detail the bottom of the boots. For cinematic stuff, maybe. And then, oh, looks like I'm missing. Speaking of base. It's in my base, duh. Let's open that up, hold down shift, shoot it out of there, and then we'll turn our base back off. Let's do a crease, there we go. Let's push these in. Oops. Change modified topology, mirror and weld, local symmetry turned off, W, Go to Unmesh Mesh Center with X turned on. Good enough. Inside of the leg, see if I get a shot of that. Looks pretty plain to me, I'm just gonna leave it. And then, only last thing is the back of these legs. Oh God, thank God, they're both the same. So, um, here, and it looks like I might be able to use the geometry that I have even better, Shift D. Uh, and I'm just going to eyeball this one. So about halfway down here, goes out and then over, and then back. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to say wait, out, over, and then across. Damn, so close. Um, okay, here's the thing. So we're going to go in here to B our, oh boy, we got a bunch of stuff in here. We should have a Z modeler brush here. Z Z modeler Z projects your measure guide. ZM slice. So I'm going to take this line here, and I'm going to go up, and then over and down. This line, oops, here, up, and then to here clean this up. So delete edge here. Let's say uncrease all. Uh, this is a mirror. So mirror, mirror and weld. Delete edge. Delete edge. Okay. So now this goes down and then it goes across straight. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's going to go up. Okay, so here, all of this is going to be one mesh. So I'm just Alt, dragging over it to paint it. Yes, okay, I can, I can fudge it. I'm gonna grab both of these, Yonch Modified Topology, Delete Hidden, isolate this, Control W. Uh, and one more time, we'll just head over here into Panel Loops, Thickness Way Down, Polish Off, just hit Panel Loops, Oh, you're not going to do it, are you? Okay, that's okay. We can do a 
Let's just do this. Come on. Sometimes panel loops doesn't do great on low res stuff. So inset polygroup all legacy region. Oh man, let me try this one. Okay, it's a little bit cleaner. Fair enough. So I'm going to say gold and red. Judge my photo to delete hidden. I'm going to simplify this a bit. We're just going to say hover over an edge. We're going to say collapse edge here. So we're just going to go to points here. Delete edge. Good enough. And then now extrude all polygons back in chunky style, flip, crease, dynamic two, three, and then I can clean up that stuff with sculpting. So this top one here, let's, let's like write these out, control shift, A, split hidden. Uh, you know what, we'll do three and four, apply I'm going to go in here with our H polish brush and we'll say goodbye to pinching. And then same thing down here. I'm going to alt tap here. Let's do, um, while it's still in its very low res form, um, I'm going to see if I can't, uh, you know what, I'm probably not going to be able to. Let's hit control D, turn off dynamic. I'm going to say delete lower. I'm going to finesse this just a tiny bit. Uh, insert single edge loop. Let's hold down Alt. And we're going to just bump this out just a tiny bit just to alleviate some of that nasty pinching. D for dynamic. And then now, while it's at this level, we might have a little more luck with those extra edges helping us maintain those shapes. Okay, so uh, crease level two smooth level three, it's fine. Apply, so now it's real geometry. Again, we can continue to help out our shoddy sub modeling. Believe me, it's janky, not great, but it gets the job done. Okay, so on the back, um, okay, it should go pretty fast. I'm gonna say, uh, we've already applied that. I'm gonna hit control D until we get up to I don't know, half a million or so because we're putting in some little detail here. Now we're just gonna do a square mask. So let's isolate this poly group out front. Um, and you know what, let's square this up. I'm gonna go to the side here so I can kind of line this up so it's straightish. Good enough. So now I can put in kind of a fat little rectangle in here. Control tap to blur it a bit, Control alt tap to sharpen it back up. Let's bring everything else back. And that was the only reason I did that, so I didn't have to unmask that back part. Control tap to invert that, W, Alt tap. Let's push this in, oops. Looks like I still managed to get a little mask on there. We'll push this in. You know what we could do? No. Um, nah. I hate, I hate going into the millions, but sometimes you just gotta. I mean, it's ZBrush, so it's not like it's hard for it to handle. It's just more of a me mental thing. I don't know why I bother. I, I, I could be working in the 20 millions and it wouldn't make any difference. But for some reason in my head, I'm like, no, less polygons. Say, control tap, control alt tap. Hmm. Okay, we got that built in. I'm going to finesse this just a little bit here. It's, it's, again, not my favorite way to work, but we need to get the posing. Okay, let's go out of solo mode. Let's grab something that doesn't have any subvision history like these boots. Um, actually, we already have a brush that has the first bit of detail we need. And in fact, these are both pretty close. So if I say take this one, Let's go ahead and scale it up with LSIM turned on. 
and then control drag out a copy. Unmask. Um, actually, we need to split these off. Control shift. Split hidden. And then on this one in here, this back bottom one is just a cap, so we can go um, <laughs> I was hoping I'd have an elegant solution, but they're all the same. Let's do, I'm gonna do this, Control Shift A, and then we can go down here to Poly Groups, and there is a Regroup Visible. So now we have different Poly Groups, and now I can say, okay, you're just gonna get these ones here, Delete Hidden, and now I can just close this one here. Boop, Control W. Say we got that, and let's put a bevel on here. Bevel, and isolate just these ones. Increase PG, dynamic, that's what it has. And then two alphas on the side. We already got our alpha brush set up. So, alt tap. And I always do this. Adjust last with our control tap twice. Oh my God, you're almost there. You know what, and I'm gonna call it, those shoulder pads for now are just gonna be paint only, and then if I do the cinematic version, we'll bump it up a notch. So for these boots, let's go ahead and say, yeah, hmm. let's go ahead and do a dynamic, crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four, apply, and we'll just wrangle these into place. I'm gonna do a quick smooth, um, if we need a little tread, I'm just going to go to the side here. Control shift. Um, what's the best way? You know what? Maybe put this at an angle. Let's go through here and we'll do like a clip rect. Hold down control shift. Um, let's see. Here. So at an angle. Just looking straight across. These aren't real flat is part of the problem. Hold down Alt. And if you want a real boot tutorial, go ahead, might as well throw this up here. Oops, this one. If you scroll down on my Airstation page, it's uh, there's a big boot ZBrush tutorial. Uh, it's an oldie, but uh, it might still be good and then also on YouTube it's in there as well so you can check that out okay okay let me get caught up um, yes this is by far the longest I've ever streamed here today uh, it'll be on YouTube uh, Admiral Bees this will be on YouTube or Twitch <laughs> yeah there's no turning off the awesome cool cool now, we're just getting close enough to where I can just be like ah, just just do it okay so here I was gonna run a just a quick smooth it's fine it's fine it's fine and then the heel is flat uh, it looks like there is some fancy heel work here so just real quick I'm gonna go through and just be like give me a heel shape of course we need to duplicate this off go into solo mode real quick you guys know how to do panels uh, actually you know what let's do a BTO and you know what? I'm just gonna delete lower real quick. We can always get it back. So here, and then swoops around and then goes down. Ah, you know what? I'm terrible at this brush. I am really the worst. Because you gotta cross them over and then this is okay. But then this I get a little bit squirrely. Here, yeah, see? I knew it was gonna get me. And then I guess we could just make that a triangle. All right, I guess that worked out okay. Split mask points, let's go back to where this one here, unmask, uh, oh, that was reconstructed. 
This one is just garbage. We don't need this anymore, so that's fine. Delete. Okay. Little finesse. Let's go ahead and just run a low crease tolerance dynamic crease edge uncrease. Yeah, that didn't turn out great, but at this point, I am just trying to get this to its posable state. Stop getting caught up in details, Mike. Okay, so what is this? This is my original um, under everything mesh. <laughs> so let's go through here. Let's clip this back. So it's out of the way. And in fact, let's just real quick, I'm going to color this with pink just so I can make sure it's not poking through anywhere it shouldn't be. It should just be hanging out in the background here, in the depths. Standard brush Z add. Oh yeah, and the neck. You know what? This is just Dynamesh, so mask, pull, turn our Z intensity back up on our Z add there. Actually, don't mind it being inside the face because I do need some blocker in there. Good enough. And just because we're here, let's pretend like we got something going on in this area. Indication of purpose. Okay. Let's turn that off. Oh my goodness. We got a space marine. Let's make sure these maintained. Yep, okay. So now, turn everything else back on. Turn this back on. Um, I'm probably gonna do a real sit down and knock down, drag out posing session, but I'm not gonna <laughs> make you sit there for it. So we'll go ahead and save this. Um, I'll do a quick one just to kind of walk you through. Uh, but I gotta go let the dogs out. It's lunchtime. So, uh, in order to pose something, um, let's go ahead and turn off our base because we don't need the base to pose. It's, we can always just append something in while we're posing just as reference if we want to pull in the base. But what you can do, and again, we've already saved this off, so feel free to Whatever. So uh, we got this, and now let's go ahead and pose it. So you can, because he's so mechanically inclined anyways, you can just go in here to like move multiple, uh, hold down control shift, and just grab um, pieces. But because some of them are like mirrored, some of them aren't, you'd have to go through and mask some of these pieces, and it'd be kind of a pain. So in lieu of that, it's doable, but it just might take you a few extra cycles. Um, and instead of doing that, let's go through, and let's go up here to Z plugin. Transpose master, transpose mesh. Now you can pose with a Z sphere rig in this instance. I would not recommend it. Um, it's good for like creature stuff, but not great for this type of thing. So um, transpose mesh is what it's going to do is drop down everything to its lowest subdivision, merge everything together. And anything you don't need to have with it, like the backpack, just get rid of it. Um, not don't get rid of it, but hide it. Because this is all stuff you can just, it's easier if it's, it's a big bulk thing to just go through. Actually, is this all one thing? Let's make it all one thing. Uh, move multiple, turn on move multiple, hash, unhash. So just click drag over all these pieces. Do control F, say backpack, and then we'll just turn that off and then turn on move multiple. Okay, so now this is all the stuff we wanna pose. Anything else? that we may not want to pose, like the helmet you could probably pop off and just pop in and rotate later, but I'll leave it on there because he looks cool. Um, but anything you want to move together, 
I make sure it's visible. And then we're gonna say um, transpose master to tpose mesh. That's again gonna drop everything down to its lowest and merge it into one solid object. Give it a second. He's a he's a beefy boy. Not only in how he is, but also uh, his overall uh, poly count and uh, subtool count. So we go through here, and this is a good place to remember, like, oh shoot, yeah, I totally forgot his interior space doesn't have Ziri mesh, so that kind of sucks. Uh, that's okay. And then also, I need to flip his. Um, shoulder pads around it. We talked about it in the last stream and then I completely forgot. So anyway, he's got his low res stuff. If you want to isolate some of these things, um, you can turn X symmetry, turn off, and then just grab all the pieces of his right side of his body. Control tap to invert that. Go through here and set your pivot. You can use transpose. So hit Y if you want to like, if you like more of the, you know, here's the top ring you can move to the shoulder and then the bottom ring you can move to the wrist. Position these where you would position bones. And then you can go through here and just hit R for rotate. And you can rotate these things around or whatever. You can also just use gizmo. Uh, just position it, you know, in the shoulder area. And then if you want to go through and pose, you can. So we'll go ahead and swoop this around. And then if you want to, you know, pose around the arm, uh, you can just go through here and just mask. So you can, like, mask down the middle of the arm. And then if you want this... Um, this thing to be completely masked, just go through and mask it. And then now just reposition where you want this to be. And then you can bend that arm. Uh, same thing for the helmet. Again, the helmet you probably just should have left separately, but you can grab all the pieces in the middle here. And then you can say, actually make sure everything's unmasked. Grab all the pieces in the middle that you want to pose. Control Shift A, Control Drag over these pieces. Um, actually, let's mask, and then I'm going to say Control Shift Tap this one, and we'll say Unmask. It's kind of just about oops, invert that. It's kind of just about juggling your masks. So now we can hit W. We can say Go to Unmask Mesh Center. What the hell? W. Unmesh mesh center. What else is? It should be going to my helmet. I don't know why. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go in here to like. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Go in here uh, to the neck area, and then you can go through here, and you can just you know any sort of bending stuff you want to do. Go through here and pose them out. However you want to pose them, and then when you're done, you can say T pose mesh to sub T. That'll go through all your subtools and it will put them into place. But it's kind of good to run that just to see what's wrong with your mesh and what you forgot to do. And then you can go into your really po real posing. But again, I'm not going to make you sit there and watch me do it. Um, but I'll go through, I'll pose that, I'll do some renders. We'll throw it into Cinema 4D. We'll get some little cloud, we'll get some um, cotton, cotton. Uh, you know how when you're doing miniatures, you can do little cotton ball, pulled cotton balls with paint and LED lights to make them look like things are lighting up and stuff. There we go. So now here's our guy, beautifully posed, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you probably want to fill in that gap, but yeah, do it, do a quick stress test, make sure everything's working. And then, uh, there you go. Ta-da. The emperor protects. Thanks everybody. Uh, cool, yes, yeah. so it'll be on YouTube. You can watch again. Uh, export the mesh in the rig and pose it externally and bring it back in. Ah, good point, Matt Keen. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm just about to hop off, but, um, but yeah, it's a really good point. So your T-Pose mesh right here, feel free to take that wherever you want to. You can export it, looks like I, okay, I did have some unmasked garbage at the bottom there. Um, so you can go through and you can, Pose that however you'd like, bring it back in, that'll update this file, and then when you hit T, pose a sub T, it'll spit it back over. Um, as long as you don't change your vert order, obviously you don't want to cut anything in while you're posing. Just just move, and uh, it should work. Cool. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to go let the dogs out, and uh, yeah, cool. Catch you on the flip side.